close the doors of your mind from all demonic thought, all carnal will, all carnal thought, all emotions, all desires and fears. Extinguish the unseen beings from around your mind and bring your mind to balance. Put away the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the things that can cause one to lose balance within oneself. For today is the day of freedom. Today is the day of warning. Today is the day that Yahuwah has made. Today has the day is that Yahuwah has today is the day that Yahuwah has made that has been Yahushua. And we will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad and be in Simcha, Tamim. For we acknowledge this Yum, this Yum, the one who sits in the highest Shamaim, above the Shabai Shamaim, who gives and who takes away. The one who formed all Kukabim, Yarak, and Shema. The one who sent his oar from the beginning on the Kadim, on the first day of creation, and allowed it to shine inside of the earth that was in darkness. Even today, as we sit, as we stand, as some will, we understand that this world is in darkness and is in need of light, is in need of oil. And knowing that the ones who receive the light, the oil, those who receive the, the command, those who receive the mandates, the Bakul, the ones who receive the wisdom and knowledge and understanding in their heart and their love, labor in their mind, and understanding of Yahushua Mashiach, you are the light of the world. You are a city. You, the person, the people. So as we sit here, as we stand here, we acknowledge the one who made the Menzori Mountains, Mount Kilimanjaro, the one who made Mount Song, the one who made the Andes Mountains, the K2 Mountains in Pakistan, the one who formed the Appalachian Mountains, the one who established the ends of the earth, even where the sea got its decree, the one who established the sphere, the Ku, on the surface of the deep, Yahuwah Allahim, the one who made the Shabai Shamaims, the one who established the cosmos and the stellar orders and all of the cosmic winds that blows from his breath. The one who established the her star system to the Rafa star system to the al star. The one who established the al star. The one who created even the Pleiades, the seven stars, and Orion, the Kitsil, and all the other star systems in the cosmos, and the constellations and Mazara, and all of the other beings throughout the worlds. We acknowledge the one Yahuwah who governs all thrones, principalities, powers, kings, rulers, all beings on this earth, on the planet. We acknowledge him as the one who gives and takes away, who gives life, who gives ore, who gives understanding, wisdom, and kukum, who reveals the secret things unto his people. He revealed the secret things to his people and to our children that we may understand from generation to generation who reigns and who lives, who wounds, who kills, who makes alive. Yahuwah, who creates the shalom, who creates peace, and he creates the evil. Yahuwah Allahim, who has been Yahushua. So this yom, we acknowledge and we move forward in kindness, love, ahav, self-control, forgiveness, mercy, and most of all, love, ahav, which binds everything in perfect harmony, which binds your body in perfect harmony, which binds your mind in perfect harmony, which binds your umbilical cord that you may unite and be connected to the one who made all things as a child as a humble child in a world that's full of chaos, a world that's full of lies, a world that's full of patterns and flight patterns and, and, and changed history books hiding, hiding the truth from human man on the earth that others may get praise. But this young 
this young with our mouths, with our words, with our minds, and unite in our inward man, that we may be transformed by the renewing of our mind continually. So this is 2nd Ezra, 5th Ezra, 1654. It says, Behold, Yahuwah knoweth all the works of men, Adam, human beings. Like he knows all the works of human beings, their imaginations and their thoughts. So if you think you don't know your thoughts this day, this yom, then you really have no idea who your Allahim is, who the one who sits in the highest Shamaim is, who controls all ethers, protons, electrons, neurons, quarks, molecules. He controls all particles, all chromosomes, all of the 46 chromosomes that go inside of your body. Right? It says, in their hearts, in their legs, he understands everything that's going on in your mind, your cerebrum, your cerebral cortex, your frontal lobe, your pineal, your hypothalamus, that controls even the pituitary gland, that controls even your body, that makes it shrink and that makes it get bigger. He controls all of that. He knows everything. Verse 55, which spake the word, let the earth be made, and it was made. So he spoke through the bar, and that was it. He spoke the word, and everything bowed to the word. Everything bowed to the word and obeyed it. Let the earth be made, and it was made. Let the Shamaim be made, and it was created. And it formed and shaped. It says, in verse 56, it says, in his word were the stars made. And he knoweth the number of them. Do you know the number of the stars? Can you count them all? You can go and try to figure them all out. But he said, the only way you're going to know it, <laughs> you got to ask your father. Right? 57 says, he searches the deep and the treasures thereof. He had measured the sea and what it contained. He had measured it. So if Yahuwah measured, all, Yahuwah measured all these things, so what you asking all these other people about for answers? Why don't you ask the person who actually measured it? You want to say, look at the maps and you look at all these things that they drew and all the lines they drew around the world and you'd be like, man, they measured all that out? How foolish are you? How foolish are you? How about you ask the one who actually measured it and what it contained and he knew everything that's in it. All the mysteries and the things that people try to don't know, understand. They see things, they see things, they see and understand beings and things and all these things they're trying to figure out. He said, all right, I know what's in the earth. Even the things that man hasn't even rediscovered in their mind yet. And I ain't gonna say discovered because you ain't discovered nothing. You're just rediscovering what was already made. Right, verse 58, he has shut the, sh the sea in the midst of the waters. And with his words hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. Right? He did all that by his word, the ku, the circle on the surface of the deep. Verse 59, 59 he spread it out the Shamaims like a vault. Upon the waters hath he founded it. So just like the, the Shamaims, you, you've seen a vault. A vault is a sphere. You look at the spheres out in the, in the cosmos. He spread it out like a vault. Upon the waters he founded it. Just that in the desert hath he made springs of water. And pools upon the tops of the mountains. You ever go on top of a mountain, they have waters up there. Pools. Guess what? He put it up there. That the floods might pour down from the high rock to the water of the earth. There ain't nothing like getting water from a spring mountain, from a water that flows from a mountain, that flows down first. Because once the water flows down first, then you will send up. He didn't have an ear. Verse 61, he made man and put his heart in the midst of, his, of the body and gave him breath. Can you do that? Life, guess what he did? He gave him breath, life, and understanding. Right? You look at a child that's born in the world through a matrix of a woman. When that child gets a, the breath and life in, the, in its body, life and understanding, when it comes out, it knows exactly what to do when it comes out. It cries. Because when you look at this wall today, it's better to cry when you come out of the room. Like, what am I doing here? Right. Verse 62 says, Yea, the Ruach of the Almighty Allahim, which made all things and searched out all the hidden things in the secrets of the earth. That's what the Ruach of Yah. It says, the, Yea, the Ruach and the Ruach of Almighty Shadi, Allahim, Yahuwah, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the earth, in the secrets of the earth, 
surely he knoweth your invention. So if he, he does this by his ruach, he searches out everything in the earth. He searches out everything. He could scan all the way to the, to the center of the earth, all the other earths in the center of the earth. Even when those who are trying to hide, in the, hide on the ground with Mach 10 trains and Mach trains that go connect continents, he could see you in there. He see you. He says, sure, and guess what? Surely he know your inventions. You think he don't know that invention you created under the ground? That you got to bore holes in the ground? You got to create a whole new city? You think he don't know the, the people that's down there? You think he don't know the, the things and experiments that are going on down there? You think he don't know that? He said, surely he know your inventions and what you think in your hearts. He already know what you're thinking in your mind too. What you're thinking right now, what you're thinking about you're getting ready to do today, tomorrow when the sun go down, what you're getting ready to do. Guess, guess what else he know? Even, the, even them that sin, kata, and what hide their kata or sin, right? I got sin in my life, but I'm going to hide it from the one who can peer through, peer through a plant. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So 64 says, therefore have the Yahuwah exactly searched out all your works. So he searched out this whole world, this planet, and all the other planets, and all the other worlds, and stars, and cosmo, cosmic beings. He searched all your works, and guess what he said? And he will put you all to shame. He's going to put everybody on the earth to shame. He said, I'm going to put you all to shame. So 2 Enoch, Canuke 11 and 1. And, then, and those men took me and they carried me up to the fourth Shamayim, up to the fourth Shamayim. So all you people who saying you ascended up into the highest Shamayim, or ascended up higher than this Shamayim, and saying that you ascended and you went up there by yourself, and you just say, I just went up there and somebody spoke to me and all these things, and you and nobody brought you up there, just understand you're a liar. Because you're getting escorted. You ain't just going up there. If you go through all the writings, you'll always find that people who ascended, they always somebody always brought them. They always escorted. So who took you up there? Guess what he said? The only person who ascended up in the Shamaim who could do that is Yahusha himself, Yeshia. Right. And it says, it says, and those men took me and they carried me up to the four Shamaim. And they showed me there all movements and sequences and all the rays of the solar, solar and lunar light. Now, this is kind of hard to believe for human beings who've been programmed. Right? But how many people you know have been shown the solar and lunar light and all the sequences and movements of it? You can look at the greatest astrophysicists on the planet. But then you look at Canuck, Enoch. Guess what it says? And I measured their movements and I compared their light. Enoch did this. Canute said. And I saw, so if he measured their movements and compared their light, who gave it to him to be able to do that? Who allowed him to do that? Yeah, who gave it to him? He showed it to him. He gave it to him because he the one who did it. The Abba told him. Ah. He says, and I saw that the sun has seven has a light seven times greater than the moon. So when you look at the, the moon, right? When you look at the moon or the woman, and then you have the sun. The moon, sun, the moon, the same size, but the sun is seven times brighter than the moon. Verse 23, says 23, 19, such a man only feared the eyes of men. Adam, human beings, and know of not that the eyes of Yahuwah are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So when you start looking at the sun, the Shemash, should look, look at it in its full strength at noon time. If you can't, if you can't look at that, surely you ain't going to be able to see Yahuwah. <laughs> ain't no way. He's 10,000 times brighter than that. Behold, guess what it says, beholding all the ways of men, Adam, human beings, and considering the most secret parts. So he's looking at you right now. He's considering the most secret parts inside of the, the parts of the hidden self of who you are. Surely he knows your thoughts. And he measured out all the things on the earth and in the cosmos. And you think he can't see you? You think he can't hide? You think you can hide from him? 
David, David, David said it best. Dog, he said what? If I ascend in the Shamayim, you there. If I built my bed, in, if I go in the sea, you there. If I built my bed in the depths of Sheol, you are there. There ain't no way I can hide from your Ruach. So why are you thinking you're going to hide? You can go all the way to Pluto, Mars, Venus, Mercury. You can go all the way, you can go hot up there, but it's still he's going to find you. He can see you. So this is a Nazarene, acts of the Shalakim, advantage of knowledge, right? So we must, above all things, hasten to the knowledge of the truth. We got to run. That as with a light kindled thereat, we may be able to dispel the darkness of errors. People in darkness of errors. Like most people in this world today, they scared of hard work, right? They scared of, of, of sweat, tears, and scrapes and getting getting dirty. Why? Because they don't want to do it. Because the lazy mind is taking over the, the whole earth. The whole earth. Why? Because they don't want to search these things out. It says, for ignorance, as we have said, is a great evil. You know why? Because they want to remain ignorant. They want to remain in ignorance. Why? Because so they don't have to be accountable for nothing in this life. Because once you know, you are no longer ignorant. So ignorance is the great evil. So if you're saying that you don't know something, you're ignorant. And guess what? It's evil. You know why? Because things, beings, demons, spirits, and other things can take advantage of you. And humans. Because you know every imagination and thought of man human beings, they can get advantage of you. Why? Because Guess what it says? But because it has no substance, it is easily dispelled by those who are earnest. So if you if you earnest about the truth, that's why people who seek the truth, they say, oh, you, you, you woke. When you start seeking the truth, man, all that ignorance is dispelled. Like, I, I know this thing. Guess what it says? For ignorance is nothing else than not knowing what is good. So if you don't know what's good, if you don't know what's good and perfect, you don't know what good is, Ta'u, then what are you going to do? How are you going to do good in the earth? It says, for us, it says, for, it says, for ignorance is nothing else than not knowing what is good for us. Once know this, and ignorance perishes. Once you know what's good, ignorance perishes. Because everything ain't good. Therefore, the knowledge of the truth ought to be eagerly sought or sought after. It says, and no one can confer it except the Nabi or Nabi or of truth. For this is the gate of life. So when you start looking at this Nabi of truth, there's only one. When you start looking at him, he says, for this is the gate of life to those who enter in the road of good works going into the city of salvation. So when you don't know what's good, and you think your, those, if you don't know and you're ignorant, then guess what? You're going to be doing evil works trying to get into the city of salvation. Right? It's better to know what's good, people. Marshall Lee 24, Marshall Lee Proverbs 24, 3 through 5. It says, by wisdom is a house, by wisdom a house is built. And by understanding is it established. So when you start looking at Kukma and wisdom, we start understanding how to build one. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So when you start looking up all these things, all these things cost you something. Right, it's going to cost you something. Pleasant riches, precious. You say, what, all the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches? You know how much it, you know how much it, it costs money to fill up rooms in a house and decorate it? It's going to cost you money to build it. It's going to cost you something to get wisdom, kukma. It ain't something that's easily get got. You have to study. You have to search. Verse, it says, a wise man is full of strength. A wise man or woman is full of strength. And a man of knowledge, a man or woman of knowledge enhances his or her might. Now, we talk about understanding wisdom and knowledge understanding, but if you don't seek, eagerly seek after these things, eagerly search, you're going to be, you're going to be weak when it comes to the, to the battleground, to war. When you start warring with these 
things, these beings in, you're within yourself. But you got to have it. It's not something you just cast away. It's not something you forget. Because once you forget, then you become ignorant again. And then once you become ignorant again, then you are evil. It's going to be evil to you, right? So this is Psalms, Tahalim 51, 5 through 6. So this is in the ESV. So we're looking at Daud's, David's verses. But we're looking at these in particular. It says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. So when you start looking at your, this Amat truth that's in your mind, that's supposed to be in your inward parts, in your being, you can't forget it. If you forget any part of this truth, your inward man will be lacking, and therefore parts of your bodily functions and who you are as a human being will become, how you say, evil. Parts of you become evil, and then by you, parts of you becoming evil, then guess what happens? You have muscle imbalances. They call it, when you, in personal training, you call it muscle imbalances. You only, you only have one part of your body that's strong. Right? You'll, have, you'll have all these types of curvatures and abnormal things on your body that you can't seem to remove. Why? Because there's one part of your body that's not activated. You're not, you're not using it. So, because it's ignorance. You can only do things with a body part unless it becomes illuminated or has an energy source. So this is, so this is another version of it. The reason why we're doing this is because we got to look at some things. This is Psalms, Tahalim 51, 5 through 6, Britain, Septuagint, LXX. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother conceive me. For behold, thou lovest truth, Thou lovest truth. Thou hast manifested to me the secret thing, secret and hidden things of wisdom. Right? So you start looking at the manifestation. When you look at this, you look at the two different types. You see, you delight at truth in the inward being. And then he says, Thou lovest truth. Thou hast manifested to me the secret and hidden things of wisdom. Kukma. Why? Why do you need wisdom knowledge understanding? You need it on the inward being. Why? Because your inward man is dying if you don't have it. Shaul said, though my outward man, or they, he said, though your outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. So we're gonna look at some things. This is so these are letter, this is a letter value of the Aleph fifth. So if you don't know your 22 Aleph fifth, I suggest you go learn them. Because this is a code. When you start looking at the code, you start looking at this code and how they can construct how it's been constructed. You look at the numerical value, once you get to 10, it doubles. And then once you get past a certain number, it triples. Right? It starts going up higher and higher. Right? So you start looking at 22 alphabets, you start looking at a, a sequence of numbering system. And then this numbering system is hitting code. Right? If you're not good in math, you might have to go back and learn math. That's why I said. Ignorance has to be destroyed. You have to get ignorance out of your head. You have to stop living a mediocre life. It's time to stop living a mediocre life. Right? Mediocrity is only laziness. Right? So when we start looking at these letters, right, we're gonna look at look at these words because, because each one of these words that we're gonna see. You know, has a meaning, but it's interesting, right? But here we go. This is behold. So the word for behold. So when you see that word behold, he desireth, right? He said, "Behold, I was brought forth," right? That's what we saw. Behold, I was brought forth, right? So when you start looking at behold, is what lo or la, right? Lo, behold, la, right? When you start looking at it, so you got the 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 ha and the nun, or the final form of the nun. Right, they got they got hen. We ain't talking about no chicken or no bird, right? It could be Han or Hani, right? They put hen. Right, when you look at hen, we're not talking about some eating some meat. We're talking about behold. We're talking about low, right? Behold, right? And it says right here, 
So look at the hay or the ha, right? And it means what? Light rays, gifts, star, gifts, stars, illumination, behold. Right? That's what it, that's what the ha means. Then you look at noon is what? Life, continual, potentiality, respawn. Behold, right? I say honey. A huh. Right? And then you go right, you add them up. You have the hay, the ha equals to five, and the noon equals to fifty, which equals to fifty-five. When you add five and five, you get to a ten. Right, when you start going to square root, we're not going to, but you add up one plus zero equals one. Right, so you look at breaking it down to a small, smallest number, you get to one. You can look at the first day of creation, a cod, right? Behold. Hani, huh? Right? But they said in this verse, it said what? Behold, I was brought forth. We're talking about the beginning of a life. We're talking about the beginning of a life. Right. So the word for behold, I was brought forth or I was conceived. Right? Because that's what we saw. I was brought forth is cool. Not like cool in the world. You know how they say cool? You cool, man. Man, you cool. Cool. No. We're talking about to twist, to whirl, to dance. Right? We see people dance, they be like, you cool, man. Don't they say that? When we start looking at cool, it means to whirl, to dance, right? To fear, to tremble, to travail, to anguish, to be pained. Right? Because he said, behold, I was brought forth. Right? When somebody's brought forth into the world, what happens? It also means to be brought forth, to be born. When a woman's in travail, what happens? She's getting ready to be brought. She's bringing forth a child. Bringing forth a child, right? But it also means to dance, right? It also means to what? To wait. To pervert. It also means to wait carefully. Right, so when you start looking at these aspects, you start looking at these things in a the, in the way that it needs to be looked at. So when somebody says, you say cool, they have keel in here too, but you start seeing cool, you start understanding. And this also means suffering and torture. Right, so he said, behold, I was brought forth, right? Or Han cool. So continued on, you look at the the actual in the strong or strong Hebrew version, it says what? To whirl to dance, to labor, to give birth, gave birth, to birth, quake. You know, when you, when you go through, he says, Behold, I was brought forth, or I was in travail or giving birth. This person this being, this person, I was given brought forth in birth. And when you see somebody's in in a birthing pattern, they are quaking, they are shaking. It's chaos, like in, in other countries. They use these things as a point of giving birth. Right? They use nine months as a, a point of chaos. They use these words in terminology when it comes to giving birth. Right? In some countries. Right? So when we look at the kath, the u, the lamet, right? For cool, right? Because you know the, the, the meaning of the word ladder, ascend, descend, labor, right? U, secured, nail, tent peg, lamet, protection, rod, discipline, protection. Teacher, expert, comfort. Right? So you can you say the ladder ascending and descending joined to the teacher or the protection or discipline. Right? So when you add them all up, you got 30 for Lamit, Wa, or Usa 6. And the Koth 8, you got 44 equals to 8. Break it down equals to 4 equals to 2. So when you start looking at 44, right? When you start looking at this 44, he says, I was brought forth, or Han Kul, right? So when you start looking at these aspects, what was the 44th president of the United States? It says, I was brought forth. Who was the 44th president of the United States? Then you have eight, which you know for us, Shemani, right? When we start understanding these things, but when we start looking at eight, we know that 26 equals to eight. We know that Yahuwah's name, when you break it down, you add 26. To 26, you get to eight. 
And then when you get to the four, what, what happens? What do you get? The fourth letter of the alphabet. What do you get? Dollars. That means door, entranceway. Then you have two, right? Then you get to two, what do you get? The bith, the bai. So when you start looking at the when you start looking at this code that's been done, when you start looking at this code that's been done, you start understanding who is brought forward. I'm just trying to show you a code. Right, because Barak actually means to bless. So this is the word for iniquities. He says, I was brought forth in iniquity. I was brought forth in iniquity. Were you brought forth in iniquity? Did you come into the world through iniquity? Did you come through the world through fornication? Did you come into this world through fornication? Guess what it says? It says perversity, depravity, iniquity. Iniquities, punishment. Evil. The word for word for iniquities is avum, right? They have avum or aum, right? But it says avum. Right, when you start looking at this, I was brought forth in iniquity. Han ku aum. And guess what it says right here? And if you add up ayin, wu, right? And then you have the noon, where you got, you got 70 for the ayin, wa for the uh, six for the wa, and 50 for the noon, which equals to, I don't know if my math is right, 126. Equals to nine, equals to three. So when you look at 126, right, when you start seeing these numbers. He said, I was brought forth in iniquity. You got 26, and you add up 126 equals to what? Nine. After nine months, I was brought forth in iniquity. And what else? You break it down, you get a three. So this is the word for sin, or in sin, is kata, or it says kata or kate. They say kate with kata. Not sinna. Sinna means hatred. Because we know sinna means hatred. Sin is kata. Not like we see in congregation, they say sinna. You a sinner. No, you a, you mean you hate you got hatred? When you say you commit sin, no, you commit kata. Or you can or sinna. You got hatred. So if you got if you're a sinner, you got hatred. You commit kata, of course you're gonna. If you got you're a sinner, you got hatred for your whore, of course you're gonna commit kata. Which is what? To sin, guilt for sin, punishment for sin, fault, offense, punishment for sins, greatly offenses, penalty. He said, In iniquity, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And sin. Right. So you add up kaf, teet, and olive, or the kaf equals to what? Eight. The teet equals to teet. Teet equals to what? Nine. And the olive equals to one. Which is equal to 18, which equals to nine equals to three. Amazingly, you see that same thing. You see one, twenty-six, nine, and three. But when you start looking at who this person was, right, it goes a little deeper than that. A lot deeper. Right? Because Barak does mean to bless. Right? So the word for the word for did my mother or it says or my mother, the word for mother is what? Um or aim. Aim or am. It means mother of humans. A mother. Dam. Mother. That's what it means. A mother. Um. Right? So you look at Aleph, you got the beginning conception. Because remember, he said, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin. Beginning conception. That was my beginning and in conception into the world. That's your beginning and in conception into this world. You were born in the sin. 
You were born into sin, so why would you be Barak somebody? You were born into sin. Right? I was born in sin. It's a beginning conception, seed planting, to learn, family. Then you got me, right? Memes, flood, springs, water, chaos, semen, right? When you start looking at this, you were born into sin. Right? So when we start looking at these aspects, right, and what happens? You add up, you add, four, add them up, right? Because you know, Aleph is one, meme is 40. 41 equals a 5. What's the fifth letter of the alphabet? Ha! Behold, revealed. Behold, revealed that you were born into sin. You were born into sin. That's what you are. You were born into sin. Or how you say, Han. Avum, Aum, Kata. Right. So here we go. This is the word for word for conceive me, right? So in my mother's womb, it says what? My mother conceived, right? That's how I was born into the world. So the word for conceive is conceive is yakam. Yakam. Yakam means what? To be hot, to conceive. To, that's what happens. Conceive sexually. Right? Be, become hot, anger. Get heat. Conceive. When you, when you go through chaos, when a, when a person gives birth into the world, they're going through a chaotic moment. Quaking, eyes red, all these things. All these things take place during this time. Pain, screaming, yelling. And what happens after that? Warm up, you get hot. Behold, in iniquity, I was brought forth into this world. And sin. That was the beginning of my life. That's the beginning of your life. But guess what happens? So this is Yah. So here we go. Conceive, hot. And he says, right here, we add them up. You come, you got the Yah, the Koth, and the Me, right? You got the eye, hand, open hand, male organ, action, attainment. You can't have no child in this world without, well, without these, some of these things, right? And you look at this, ka, work, labor, ladder, ascend, and descend. It takes work to bring forth a child, to conceive. And this is mem, right? Water, semen, flood, chaos, foundation, spring, above below firmament. So two becoming one. So when you start looking at and you add all these up, equals to 58. Equals to 13. Because that number is going to be very significant. 13 equals to four. Right? You add them up, equals to two. He said the iniquity I was brought forth into this world. Kata and Aun, Avun, sin and iniquities. I would, how you say cool? You was in birth. You're in pain. Cool. So that was verse five. So this is Psalms 51 and 5 through 6. It says, Behold, you delight in truth and the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Right? We look at our mind and our thoughts, but we look at our, our inward man. Right? This is the LXX. It says, For behold, thou lovest truth, thou hast manifested to me the, the secret and hidden things of wisdom. The secret and hidden things. So the word for you delight, right? Because we already know what uh, behold is. Right? Han. Right, so let's see what this is. And you got kafats, right? For you delight or thou lovest, right? That's the word this for this word to delight in, to take pleasure in, to delight, to bend down, pleased to do. That's how you know you somebody delights. I'm pleased to do this. He said, You he said you delight. Yahuwah delights in this. What does he delight in? 
He says to bend, to delight, to move, to delight in. Right? Pleased with. So you add up kafats, get the kaf, the pa, and the sab. Right? Which equals to 80. Right? Which equals to 90. It equals to 178. When you add up 1 plus 7 plus 8, or height, well, that's not right. <laughs> I think it sees. Yeah. Seven, 1 plus 7 plus 8 equals 16. Which equals to what? 7. Right? It says, you delight in. So you telling me he don't delight in the seventh day? He delights in this. Do you delight? And he says, delight to do thy will. For your tour is in my heart. He said, you delight with what? What does he delight in with this? He delights in truth. A moth. He delights with in truth. He said, behold, I was shaping and born in iniquity and sin, but that's how we all were born. But guess what he wants us to do? He wants to delight in truth. He wants to delight in truth. Not to barack other people. He wants to delight in truth. Guess what it says? Firmness, faithfulness. Sureness. Are you sure? Reliability. Are you reliable? Stability. Are you stable? Countenance. How do you look? He said delight in truth. Faithfulness of divine instructions. Delight in these things. Truth. Trustworthiness. Are you trustworthy? He said, you were born, you were shaped, Han Kul. You were born and shaped in iniquity and sin and Katar and Avun. Avun, Avun, right? But then he's saying, but you delight in what? Truth in the inward being. But the other person delight in what? No truth, just iniquity and sin. Oh, you see 44, you see 126, 9, all these things. Remember, there's another one, 26, 9. There's other people in this world that use 26, 9, 44. 44 album, all these things. People use these numbers. Nine. There's another type, though. There's another type. You got. We just saw seven. Delight. Or how you say? Kafats. Let's see now. It says what? Firmness, instruction, divine instruction. Truth, trustworthiness, faithfulness, faithfully. Amuna. So when we add up Amat, right? Ama, because you got the, the two at the end because of 400. You got the mean because of 40. And you got the olive because of one. Equals to 441. Oh, that's Adam. Remember we added up Adam in the past? We add up Adam equals a 441. Not Highway 441. They use Highway 441, but they're trying to deceive you. But guess what? When you read it from right to left, it's 144. Start reading things from right to left, and you will see nine. He just said, y'all the light and truth. Seven, nine, right? I'll the light and truth. So this is the word for inner being. Word for inner being, I delight, for, I delight in truth in, in the inner being. Tuka. 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 It says inner regions, hidden recesses, inward parts, in your kidneys. People talk about the kidneys, right? Talk about a regenerating organ. In your kidneys, in your inner man, in the innermost thoughts. Are you reliable, faithful? Are you trustworthy? Are you delighting in truth, in the divine instruction? Are you delighting in your inward parts, your tuka? Kafats, <laughs> Kafats Amat Tuka. In your innermost thoughts, right? And then you have what? Inner parts, innermost being. Right? So you look at Tit or Kaf or Tit, Tuka, right? You got Tit, Tit, Kaf, and He or Ha. 
You got nine, you got the cop is eight, and the high is five. Which gives it what? 22. 22 letters of the Aleph. I like these things in the inner being. Why? Because the 22 letters of the Aleph, we just went over the numbering systems and everything that you saw. Those 22 letters, what? He said, I delight in these things. Truth, Amat, in the inner being, in your tuka, in your innermost parts, in your hidden recesses, inner regions. Man, in birth and pain, you were brought into this world. But then now he's saying, delight in the truth. Delight in these things. Kafat, right? Amat, Amat, Tuka. Seven, seventh day, right? Nine, continual, 360 degrees, 364. Then you have 22 letters of the Aleph. Time to delight in these things in the inward being, in your tuka. So the word for you teach me or thou hast manifested to me is yada. I delight in truth in the inward being, and thou hast manifested or to know, to learn to know. I have learned to know what? Discriminate, distinguish, right? To know, to be skillful. Are you skillful in your inward man, in your tuka, with the yamat? Are you delighting yourself in your kafats? Are you delighting yourself in your inward man? To know skillful, to make known, to know observation, care, recognition, instruction. There we go. Again, divine instruction, designation. And then it also says punishment. Why? Because these things come through divine instruction, divine in, in inward man. So continue on. The strong accordance is the same thing. Clearly understand. Clearly understand. Chosen. Experienced. Knowledge. Make known. Chosen. Cared. To bring forth before he said before Han, cool. I was brought forth in the iniquity and sin, but now he's saying delight in the inward part so you can be born again. Delight in truth, delight in the moth, delight, delight in your tuka continually. All right, so here we go. So you add the yada, you got the yada, the dollar, and the iron. The iron is 70. The dollar is four, and the yard is ten, which is for what? You got eighty-four. You got equals to twelve, which equals to three. Twelve. All right. You see, when you start looking at these aspects, it goes a lot deeper. But he says what? The word for secret, secret hidden things or in secret is katham. So when we look at katham, it says, shut up, to keep close. You have manifested in my secret places, or he said, allow me to keep it close, secret. Kept the secret, hidden parts. You have manifested me the hidden things or secret things in my, in my heart. Such hidden things. These things in your mind. It also means what? I don't have it highlighted, but it says impl implication to repair. Repair. Because you were brought forth in sin and iniquity. Right? You were brought forth in sin and iniquity. I'm brought forth in sin and iniquity. But then guess what? He's telling you to what? Delight in your inward man with truth. In your tuka, in your amar. And then what? And it repairs you. And it reveals things, the secret things. And allows you to be revealed in your inward man and repairing your mind, repairing your heart, repairing your inward man, your kidneys. We talked about the liver, fighting in the liver and the God in the, in the, in the spirit of sleep. He repairing your inward man. Why? So your body can be a living sacrifice again. So you add, you add up two a katam, or they say satam, I'm sorry. 
right? Because it's, it's not Kathom, it's Sithom, right? You got the Samic, you got the two, and the Mim, Sithom, which means what? Samic is 60, right? You got the two, it's 400, and you got the Mim is 40, right? Equals a 500, which equals a 5. We know the, the fifth letter of the we saw before is what? Behold revealed. Light. Because the light, what is light or going to do to darkness? It's going gonna, it's gonna to get rid of it. It's going to repair. Guess what it says? He said, man, you the light. And, and he said, he manifested to me the hidden things, the secret things of what? Wisdom. Kukma. Kokma. Kokma. It says wisdom, skill in war. Wisdom. Shrewdness. Wisdom. Skillful. Wisely. I'm enhancing your skills in your mind. Why? Because you need it. Amazingly, you look at that, you look at this word kaf, or are you say kukma? You add the kaf is eight, the kaf is 20, the meme is 40, and the hey, aha, is 5. Right? So when you add these up, equals to 73. If my math is correct. Equals to 10, equals to 1. When you add 1 plus 0, equals to 1. When you look at 1, a card, what do you look at? The first day of creation. Just like we read, we, we looked, added up Han. What is it equal to? One. It's the first day of your conception. The first day you became into the world, the beginning of you. You came into the world shaped in iniquity and sin, but now you're saying delight and truth in the inward being, and guess what's going to happen? It's going to repair your mind. It's going to repair your inward man, the secret parts of your mind, and that, your hidden, hidden kidneys and all the inward parts, and guess what it's going to do? It's going to manifest to you wisdom and increase your skills and knowledge and understanding. But when did that happen? That's the first day. That's being born again. First you were born in iniquity and sin. Now I'm telling you to be born by Kukma and wisdom and understanding. So you won't be ignorant because ignorant is evil and you won't be barocking people. Barack. So in light of all of that, it's a 20 second slide. Guess what it said? Because you know the 22 letter of the Alephus is very important. Very, very important. Right? It says, open, open your hearts to the exaltation of Yahuwah. And let your love abound to your hearts, to, from your mind to your lips. In order to bring forth fruits to Yahuwah, it could do life. Like we want to bring forth these fruits. We want to enhance our thoughts and our mind and repair our understanding. And to speak with watchfulness in his light. In his awe as it was in the beginning, on the first day of creation, just like we read. Kukma. Wisdom. It says what? Stand and be established. You who were once brought low. You who were once brought low and in into your, in your iniquity. Guess what he says? Stand and be established. Come up out of the soil. It says you who were once in silence, for, for you, you who were once in silence, for your mouth has been opened. Right? You who, who were despised from henceforth be raised, for your righteousness has been raised. People say, Why is Yahushua despised and rejected among men? But Yahuwah rose him up, didn't he? He did. He said, You who were once in silence, for your mouth has been opened. He's saying, stand forth, stand, and be established. You were once brought low, you who were once in, in silence speak. You, for your mouth has been opened. When Yahushua was in silence, when he finally speak. It says, verse 6 says, the right hand of Yahuwah is with you. He's telling you his hand is with you, his force. When you look at his hand, it's his force, and the force be with you. Guess what it says? And he will be your helper. He's going to help you. When you're fighting your war, when you're fighting the things that's going on, because you you you're skillful now in your knowledge and understanding, your wisdom. You're able to see the gods and the goddesses and the gods that want you to worship them. You're able to see these things. You're able to understand it. 
by the numerical value, not only that, but also you'll be able to understand it in your inward parts, that your inward man may not be, be taking over your mind. Because you control your inward man, you control your body with your mind. Your body parts don't control you. That's why you have to push past your body parts. When your body parts are aching and pain, you got to push past those things because they're just trying to control you and get you to worship them. That's all they're doing. Or you get you to submit to your ankle, to your lower back, to your finger, <laughs> to your headache. <laughs> they try you to submit. Bow down to me and obey me. For the right hand of you who is with you will be your helper. For Shalom was prepared for you before what may be your war. Like people say, protect your peace, right? But then Shalom was prepared for you before the foundation of the world. This peace. For unto us a child is born, unto us a bend is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Allahim, the Everlasting Father, the Prince, the Shafat, Shalom, the Ruler of Peace. It was prepared for you before what may be your war today. This is Kukma Shali Shaluma 6, 12 through 25. Wisdom is glorious. Kukma, as we just saw, it is glorious. It's, it is very glorious. He says, in what? And it never fadeth away. She is easily seen of them that love her and, fought, and found of such as seek her. You seek, the, seek with love. You seek wisdom with love. You'll find it. She prevented them that desire her, that desire, in, make it, in making herself first known unto them. You got to seek it out eagerly. Like we talked about, it's like running around the track. When you run around the track, what happens? You get hard, you stop. He's like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't deserving of, of any wisdom. You ain't trying to really seek after it. You, trying to, you stop. Two miles, too hard. No, I ain't doing that. Right. 14 says, whoso seeketh her early, She'll have no great travail. So when you start looking at seeking her early, what time are you rising? What time are you getting up? Are you up before the sun rises, before the cock crow? Before you hear the rooster go, ah, ah, ah. are you already up? Because if not, understand. When you look at travail, you start looking about giving birth. When you start seeking early, uh, it's a little different. It says, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. Remember where the Abraham was, ready to serve, right at the door. Ready to serve. Ten virgins, ready to serve. They ready. Five were wise, five were foolish. Oh, five were wise and five were foolish. Well, they ain't have, the foolish ones ain't had their heart repaired. Or he said their mind, they were shaping their iniquity in Qatar. That's why they were foolish. But those who delighted in the truth in the inward parts, Delighted in the ma, in the inward part, in the tuka, guess what happened? They were ready for him to open when he came. And it says what? To think there upon her is perfection of wisdom. And whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. So when you start seeing her, her, she, her, just understand these are how these goddesses be worshipped in the earth today. That's how they get worshipped today. Right, that's why you, you said, why, why, shouldn't, why, why are they putting these in there? Why? Because they want you to worship Goddess Diana, Isis, Aster, right? Hathor. Because they have names. They, they are female. And they have, they have wisdom too. They do. But remember, there's only one who can make all things though. There's only one who established the end of the earth. We're going to see too. It says, For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. So is Yahushua, is Yahuwah meet you in, Yahushua and Mashiach Yahuwah meeting you in every thought? Because if not, he's not meeting you in every thought, then something else is meeting you in every thought. Or in, you probably have 50% of your thoughts, or 20% of your thoughts, or 70% of your thoughts. There's other things that are meeting you in the, other, in the other thought. 
you got probably like five percent that you ain't give over to your hood. So therefore, that five percent is left over for other beings and other people to meet you in your thoughts, because you're saving it. This is Marshall Lee, Proverbs 8, 8 through 11. All the words of my mouth are righteous, and there is nothing twisted or crooked in them. The word, all the words of Yahuwah's mouth, there's nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands. They are all straight. It's in right to those who find knowledge. Take my instructions instead of silver and knowledge rather than gold, rather than the archons, rather than the Dow family, and all these other beings and things that try to control you, gold, tin, and precious metals, and all these things, and tin, and... And, and other minerals and zinc that they use to make cell phones and all these things. That's another. People say, why well, do they use gold and silver all these things? Because they're trying to control you with that too. Copper. He said, take my instructions instead of, instead of silver and knowledge rather than gold. For kukma, wisdom, is better than jewels. And all that you may desire cannot compare with her. All, all the jewels and, and 12 jewels of the of the breastplate, right? All the diamonds that people desire. He said nothing can compare to Kukma wisdom. As you can see, it repair your mind. It repair your thoughts. So the word for crooked is ikesh or akish, distorted, false, crooked, for perverse. All the words of Yahuwah are not distorted, false, crooked, or perverse. So if you believe otherwise, then you are deceived. So the word for straight is nakuak or nakuak. So the word for is straightforward, equitable, correct, integrity, uprightness, innocence. So all it's all straight to him who understands. It's equitable. It'll increase your value. Oh, you mean increase your mind, increase your thoughts, it repair you. It'll make your mind in, from shaping from iniquity and sin to integrity, <laughs> to uprightness. If you delight in it. In your inward part, in your matuka. So Talim Psalms 1, 11 and 10 says, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning, or Rashid, of wisdom. We just talked about how he created all things. That Surely he know all your thoughts. Surely he know all your ways. He's 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He, he revealed, he manifest to you the secret things in your mind, in your hidden parts. For wisdom, he says, all those who practice it have a good understanding. The fear of Yahuwah. It's straight to those who understand. It's easy. His praise endures forever. His praise. Right. So the wisdom of Solomon, Kukum Shri Saluma, 7, 6 through 14. For all men have one entrance into life, as we just said, read. And the light going out. Then we just read. He said, I was born into this world, shaping in iniquity and sin. That's your entrance into this world. But you don't, when you came into the world, you ain't got to go out the same way you came. I came into the world shaping iniquity and sin, but I ain't got to go out the same way I came. I ain't going to go out like that. You know how people say I go out on my terms. I'm going out. I ain't going out like that. <laughs> you ever seen the movies? They be like, I ain't going out like that. They'll fight. They'll fight all the way to the end, to the death. Man or woman. You see warrior movies, you see it. I ain't going out like that. <laughs> you know, people want to go out shaping iniquity and sin. You're like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. I'm going out born again. Wherefore, I pray to understand what's given to me. I call upon all Yahuwah, and the Ruach of wisdom came to me. Oh. You mean like one, 22. 22 letters of the Aleph is? The seventh day? We just read it. And guess what it says? I preferred her before, I preferred it more than scepters and thrones and esteemed riches. Nothing is in comparison to it. Nothing. To wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Before a seat on the United Nations, before a ruler of a CEO of a company, before the creation of a company, before I form a corporate, before I come up with an idea, before I, before I do anything, right? Wisdom and understanding is greater than all of that. Before I got money, before I get rich in millions of dollars, billions of dollars, quintillion dollars, sectillion dollars, before I get that, he said, wisdom is better than that. What good is you having all that and you ain't got no Kukman wisdom and understanding? And the steam riches, nothing to compare to her, neither I compare her in any precious stone. Because all gold in respect to her is as little sand. And silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty. You get the health and beauty industry? Hey, people who esteem that higher than Kukuman wisdom and knowledge understanding. I'm beautiful. We talk, it talked about countenance. 
it's shaping and shaping iniquity. So we talked about accountants, tapu, tuka. But guess what? Wisdom and understanding actually makes that beautiful. It says he beautified the meek with salvation. Oh, you mean with good works? It says and, cho and chose to have her instead of light. For the light, the oil that cometh from her never goeth out. That light from the beginning, Shamaim will pass away, my, and the earth will pass away. My word, the bar, will never pass away. Ever. It was here before those things even created. Even the oil you see in the sky. In the, sky. The, seven, the sun that's seven times brighter than the moon. It says, verse 11 says, And all good things together came from her, and innumerable riches in her hand. Why? Because it's equitable, integrity, it's uprightness. The word of Yahuwah, it will give you value, innumerable riches. And I rejoice in them all, because wisdom go up before them, and knew not that she was the mother of them. Right? So you think of your integrity, your inward man being enriched in these knowledge, understanding, and kukma, and wisdom in your inward man. You are valuable. That's what brings you back to value. You are shaving iniquity. You are worthless. You are a worthless individual. You are a worthless man or woman and you don't have it. Why? Because you don't have no wisdom, understand no word on the inside. So then that increases your value. It says, I learn diligently and do communicate with her liberally. I do not hide her riches. For she is the treasure unto men that never fail, which they that use become the friends of all you who. You who you should say, you my friends, you do us so I commend you. You become a friend of you who. Being commended from the gifts that come from learning. Gifts from learning. He said he manifested in me what? All the hidden and secret things of wisdom. And it repaired my mind, repaired my inward man, repaired my kidneys, my kidneys, my inner being, my tuka. So wisdom of Solomon, Kukma Shisha Luma, 3, 9 through 13. They that put their trust in Yahuwah shall understand the truth. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It will be healing to your umbilical cord, your shore. They that trust in Yahuwah will understand that. Humble yourself like a child. Right? And such as be faithful in, oh, there you go, faithful in love. Faith. Full in love shall abide with him. That's what amat means. We just talk about delight in truth to the inward being. Delight in amat, amat, in the mind, in the thoughts, in the inner being, in your tuka. He said, that's what you will desire. For grace and mercy, great con and mercy is to his kodashim, and he hath care for his elect. But the unrighteous shall be punished according to their own imagination. There we go. When you say lean to your own understanding. That's what happens to us. That's what happens to us in this world. Right. So here we go. It's what you have neglected the righteous and forsaken Yahuwah. So now you don't left Yahuwah. You don't left the knowledge. You don't left it. And you went to your own mind, your own understanding. You know that that five, ten percent. They talk about give 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 ten percent of your income, your hard earned wages, but they they giving ten percent of their mind. They didn't give to you who yet. It says verse eleven says, "For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he, he or she or child is miserable." It says, and their hope is vain, and their labor is unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. You can still prosper, people, but if you don't have these the wisdom and nurture. Now I understand you forsake your who and you on your own imaginations and you prospering. Just understand it's only for a time. It's only for a time. You ain't got that much time. It says their wives are foolish and their children wicked and their offspring cursed. Generational curses. Man, Ish, Adam. Because what do you say? I was shaping iniquity. How does the problem of a child come into the world shaping iniquity in Katak? Fornication, adultery. What happens? A man and a woman come together, conceptual sect, the yod, the yod and the aim come together, and all these things can create. And you come into the world. Whether you whether you married or not, you come into the world, what happens? You're shaping iniquity. Sin. I gotta get back. I gotta get right. I can't come in, I can't go out the same way I came into the world. I gotta delight in truth in the inward parts that I can be born again and my mind repaired and my inward man repaired so I can 
be revealed the secret things of Kukum in my mind. So that I can what? Increase, not be overly righteous. No, I need to increase in wisdom and understanding, righteous man or person, right? That I may destroy overly righteous and wicked people or wicked things in my mind. I gotta increase, not over. You gotta be over me. You gotta increase. I know how they translate it, but we've been over this before already. It says, verse 6, Sirach, Sirach 1, 11 through 12, The fear of Yahuwah is honor and kabod and gladness and crown of rejoicing. The fear of Yahuwah maketh a merry heart and giveth joy, gladness, and a long life. Eternal life. Long life, eternal life. Whoso fear of Yahuwah, it shall go well with him at the last. And he shall find favor in the day of his death. Now, when you start looking at fear in Yahuwah, you start looking at all these things, these gods that try to get you to worship them. Beware. They, they real wise, too, with it. So verse 14 says, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. Verse 15, 15 she, she had built it an everlasting foundation, with the men. So when you start looking about being faithful in the womb, we just talked about faith, being faithful, amok, faithful, trustworthiness. In the womb, he said, but I was shaping iniquity and sin, but he said, you know what? Humble yourself like a child and delight in the Yahuwah, in the Amat, in your Tuka, in your inward being, and I reveal the secret things of wisdom in your, and it will repair your mind, your, in your kidneys, and your inward man. Then you can present your body a living sacrifice. Sound like somebody who had to come into the world and do something. Like you gotta do the same thing, right? It says verse 15 says, She had built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. The fear of Yahuwah is fullness of wisdom, and filleth men with her fruits. Men and women with her fruits. She filleth all their houses with things desirable, and garners with her increase. We just talked about how wisdom is established and a house is built with all of the furnishings and things on the inward man. It's through wisdom. That's how you do it. It says, the fear of you who is a crown of wisdom. Make it in person, make it peace and a perfect health. And make perfect health to flourish. Both which are gifts of Yahuwah and, and enlarges their rejoicing, that love him. It make your inward man, it make you bring the perfect health on the inside. Why? Because your kidneys, your liver and all these things, your mind, your brain, your, your cerebrum, your cerebrum cord, your frontal lobe, all unhealthy. Your pituitary pineal gland is unhealthy. Right? Wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Yahushua, Yahuwah heals that. He opens up your mind, that your, your, that your mind can expand out of the, the thought process that they have you entrapped in on this earth. And the programming that one has since, he came, since one came into the world, through schools and all these things, through concentration. School, they tell you to concentrate in school. So we can concentrate in how you say, this is the new world. This is how we've created it. Reprogramming camp. Now I'm trying to reprogram your mind. <laughs> he said, reprogram it back. It says, both which are the gifts of Yahuwah and enlarges the rejoicing that love him. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge and understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is the fear of Yahuwah. And the branches thereof are a long life. The fear of Yahuwah driveth away sins. So when we talk about shaping an iniquity and sin, now he's telling you to, I delight in truth and inward man. That's the fear of Yahuwah. You delight in faithfulness, in the truth, right? In trustworthiness, right? All these things in the mind, in your inner, in your tuka, and it repairs your mind and your thoughts. It'll drive away sin. It'll extinguish them like a fire, like a, like a, like a smoke of flame. Like the clear water, it's just like a spark. Guess what it says? And where it is present, it turneth away wrath. It turneth away the wrath of Yahuwah. When you have the fear of Yahuwah, it turns away his wrath on you. Or on your life. Or on other people in your life. Or on the household. Because it could be you, man, woman, or child, that's bringing the wrath of Yahuwah on the house. And the people say, why do you say that? Because that's how Satan gets in. He gets in your body, in your house. So the Jubilees, Old Testament, Pseudopograph. 
right? New Ark, prayers of the demons. It says, in the third week of that jubilee, the polluted demons began to lead astray all the children of, <laughs> lead astray the children of New Ark, the sons, and lead them to folly and to destroy them. And New Ark, and the sons of New Ark came to New Ark, their father, and they told him about the demons, or the Shadim, or the Jinn, who were leading astray the the blinding and blinding, right? Leading astray and blinding and killing his ch grandchildren. Blinding. Blinding. Because if you blind, just understand, you're going to need somebody to open your eyes. He says, and killing the grandchildren. And he prayed before Yahuwah all. And he said, the all Yahuwah of spirits, which are in all flesh, who acted mercifully with me and saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood and did not let me perish as you did the children of perdition, because great was your kind upon me and great was your mercy upon my soul. Let the kind be lifted up upon my sons and do not let the evil spirits rule over them, lest they destroy them from the earth. Do not let the evil spirits rule over our minds and our thoughts that, that you may not destroy us from the earth. But they're trying to destroy you. They're trying to destroy your life. They're trying to destroy your mind. They're trying to destroy your, your inheritance of eternal life. They're trying to destroy everything in your life. That's all they want to do. You ever notice why when people get, when spirits come, like things start getting tore up. Things start happening. Things start, things are getting destroyed. Violence. He said, when these spirits start to attack, but he said you better gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and fight because you're at war within yourself right he said but he said but barack me and my sons and let us grow and increase and fill the earth and you know that which you, your watchers the fathers of these spirits did in my days and also these spirits who are alive most people don't believe in this stuff they be like oh that's not true ain't no super, ain't no other super beings and beings that come down here and have and create other spirits and demons from another world. <laughs> he said, guess what he says? Shut them up and take them to the place of judgment and do not let them cause corruption among the sons of your servant, O my Allahim, because they are cruel and were created to destroy. That's all you were created to do. Must stomach, Satan, that's time. The, the underworld that they say. To Cushion and Mizraim, they be, they be conjuring up the Book of the Dead. Like, well, why would you trying to conjure up spirits? What do you see? These are the things people are playing with demons, and then they bring these demons into the world, and then people wonder why a lot of things going wrong. Right here we go. It says, guess what it says? And let them not rule over the spirits of the living, because you alone know their judgment, and do not let them have power over the children of the righteous. Hence forth and forever. Right? Don't. That's what he asked. Because you had a war. These same spirits and demons that were here about over 4,000 years ago are the same demons and spirits that are here today in 2022 AD. They still here. And amazing, with all this technology, all this knowledge, all these things, they still taking over people's body. They still taking over people's minds. And everything else that people have. So the Aramaic Palestinian Targums. It's in all you who saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and all the imagery and the thought of his heart was only evil every day. Why? Because of spirits and demons. And it repented Yahuwah in his word, because he made man by his word, he delight in truth and the inward man, trustworthiness, a mock. In his word that he had made man upon the earth. And he passed judgment on him by his word. That's why he said, I delight in truth through the inward man. That's why he said, I was shaping iniquity. I was born and conceived, Khan. Or he said, uh, Han, what? Cool. I was born and shaping iniquity. Why? Because that's how I was created. Every imagination and thought was evil in my mind. But guess what he said? He said, but by my word, I passed judgment. That's why he said, delight in Yahuwah and the inward man with the truth. I delight in truth, a mind, in the inward being, in your tuka, in your inner mind, in your being. And I'll reveal the hidden, hidden things and the secret things of wisdom. 
It says, and there was repentance before Yahuwah in his word that he had made man upon the earth. And he said, and judge in his mind, lave. Are you, are you judging in your mind today? What is hidden in there today? We're going to see. And Yahuwah said, I will abolish my, by my word, human, human beings, Adam, whom I created upon the face of the earth, from man to cattle, to reptile, and to the fowl of the Shamaims, because I have repented in my word that I have made them. But Nuach found favor before you were. <laughs> he said, I repented. Why do you think he, David said, delight in truth in the inward man? Repent. You were shaping iniquity and sin, but now he's saying repent. You were saying, but you delight in truth in the inward man. Like you, you who you have truth in your man, inward being. So therefore, I do the same thing like you, and then I will figure out, then I will see what's evil, and then guess what I'll do? And through wisdom, and in my increasing in wisdom, I'm going to blot out these things within myself. I'm going to do the same thing my father do. Not, you know, it depends if your father is Satan, then you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to delight in evil in my inward man. I'm going to blot it good <laughs> in myself and add more evil. That's a whole other subject. This is sheet 6 and 5. says, you will saw that the wickedness of Adam or human beings was great in the earth. This is ESV. That every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continually. And Yahuwah regretted that he had made man on the earth. And agreed him in his heart. So Yahuwah said, I will blot out man whom I have created on the face of the land. And man and animals, creeping things, birds of the heavens. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Nuach found favor in the eyes of Yahuwah. So the word for imagination, right, is inner man. Mind, will, heart, understanding, right? In the midst of things, knowledge, reflection, memory, resolution, determination, every imagination, thought, reflection, memory, inclination, conscience, appetites, people making assumptions, emotions, passions, seat of courage, right? Resolution is only evil, right? Continually in their mind. This is in their mind. You shaping an iniquity and sin. You were brought forward. You were cool. How you say high and cool? Inclination, resolution, determination, conscience, heart, seat of appetites. Every imagination inside of these things was in their thought, makashaba, device. Surely you know your devices and your thoughts and your inventions, the van, plans, the purpose, invention. He know all your thoughts. I know all of everything. Right? Plot. Bad, imagination, invented, means, purpose, everything it was only evil, raw, bad, evil, malignant, unhappy, miserable. Or he says, not Simka. Thoughts, misery. Every imagination and thought is only miserable continually, right? You start looking at the worst. That's like, worst is like lazy, lazy in mind, comparison, worse than, displeasing, unpleasant. Right? Grief, heavy, all these things, all these things take place in the mind, in the lave, in the mind. It evil continues. Ra. We I mean, talking about the Mizraim Kush. It, it, Ra was here way before that. Right? So, Psalms, Tali 119, 78. Moving forward. It says, Let the proud, let the, let the Zave or the Zav proud, arrogant be put to shame. Because Yahuwah said, I'm going to put you all to shame. I'm put you all to shame through my wisdom and all the understanding, through my mind. It says, because they have wronged me through falsehood, through lies, shakir, liars, demons. For, as for me, I will meditate. How you say? I'm the light and truth in the inward man. And you can reveal to me the hidden secrets of your wisdom in my inward mind. I'm going to meditate on your pakul, your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me. That they may know your testimony. You who just said, what? All, every, let all come unto me, all heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take your yoke upon me and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly, and you'll find rest for your soul. He said, let every man turn to me. Not to David, to Yahushua Mashiach. Let those who fear Yahuwah turn to Yahushua Mashiach, that they may know the testimonies. You think we're talking about David? Daud? They were talking about him. David is dead. 
His sepulcher, as Kafa wrote, is right there. He, didn't, he saw corruption, but Yahushua Mashiach did not see corruption. Right? And he says, Zadi, right? Zad. It says, arrogant, proud, presumptuous, arrogant. He wronged me through lies. I was shaping iniquity, born in sin. He wronged me through lies. But he said, what? Let those who fear you turn to me. Get what he said, arrogant men. Arrogant, arrogant man, arrogant woman, just arrogant, presumptuous, proud, arrogant. He said, man, these arrogant men, arrogant women, man, he said, I'm going to put you all to shame. He said, I'm going to put you all to shame. I search out all your work. Surely I know all your thoughts. People are like, well, how did Yahushua, why did Yahushua know everybody's thoughts? He said, and knowing their thoughts, does this also offend you? Does this also offend you? Surely he know your thoughts. Surely he know your ways. He searched them all out. He said, I'm going to put you all to shame. Those who fear you, let them turn to me. Come unto me all that are heavy and burdened and heavy laden with demons. Because that's what you got. Demons, spirits. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Delight in the inward man through the truth. And guess what he said I'm going to do? You find rest for your soul. Because the demons be wearing you out. People say, wearing you out, taking your energy, sucking your energy, vibrational frequency. They be sucking you dry. And reptilian, reptilian, shapeshifters, and demons. These energy stealing spirits. So the word for shame is bush. Yeah, bush. Amazing all these people are appearing in here. And you don't barack nobody, and you definitely, when you see people, say bush, shame. Shame, right? It says to be put to shame, to be disappointed, to feel shame, to be ashamed, to be to shame. I'm gonna put you all in bush, make you hide in a bush, make you hide. Where art thou, Adam? He said, I'm gonna make all y'all hide in a bush when you commit iniquity and sin. I'm gonna put you all to shame. Rocks fall on us and hide us from him who sits on the throne. Shame, bush. Acts shamefully, disappointed. You think you, when you commit wrong and iniquity, you think you're gonna disappoint your ob, even in, in natural life, in earthly things. You can see that when you do the wrong, it disappoints the father. Ah, but you have to see how one has to be created in the image and likeness before you have children. You have to walk in that. You have to walk in the image and likeness of Yahuwah in order to have children, man, woman. So they have something to see, mimic, how you say? They can see the image and likeness in you, and then guess what? They take on it. Because they're seeing you do it. A son can do only, a son ain't gonna do what his father do. A daughter can only do what his mother do. They only gonna do what you do. So the word for meditate or mediate, or meditate, I'm sorry, is siak, or he put that meme on it, Mashiach. I'm gonna meditate. He said, let all that fear me turn to me. Fear you, Yahuwah, they fear you, turn to me. He said, no man can come to the Abba except Yahuwah was sent me. He said, draw him. And he said, Yahushua said, I'm a, I'll get him up. The word going to get you up. The bar. You know says, meditate, muse, commune, sing. Sing, converse with oneself. Are you talking to yourself? Like, no, nah, we can't do that. The word, the bar says this. I shall worship Yahuwah, in whom only shall I serve. Thou shalt have no other mighty ones before me. Idols, I can't have no gods before me. That means anybody in my life, anything, he said, I can be a god. You don't ever put him before my word, the bar. Make sure you always bow to my word. Bow to what's written. It says, hence, aloud, news, pray, speak, talk. Meditate, right? See up. So where for fear is yare. Fear morally or refrain, respect, right? Reverent is what? Feeling or showing deep, solemn respect. Do you respect your father? Because if you don't respect the father, ain't no way you're going to respect the son that's going to remarry you. There's no way. Because that, that son that marries, if you don't respect the father, ain't no way you're going to 
respect the son that marries you. Ain't no way. Cause you will directly dishonor the son and the father at the same time. Y'all ready? Right. So with for statutes, I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna meditate, Siak, on your mandates, your commands, your precepts, your statutes. I'm gonna meditate on these things. Anything is what you say, Father? Abba. That's what you say, do? Do. You be in the field, you be like, do this. You gotta do it. Get you out of your father's house. You gotta do it. <laughs> Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good. You gotta do it. <laughs> Whatever your Abba say. Make sure you do this. Make sure you love your neighbor, you love yourself. And love you who with all your heart, mind, and soul. You gotta do it. That's what the son say. Because if you dishonor the son, what he say, because you know he got a direct with him father, Abba, then guess what? You dishonor the father too. Because Ben said that. He said, if your brother have any a fault against you, he said, man, you better feel your hood. He said, forgive him. 70, he's how many times? 70 times 70? 70 times 70, what you, you mean all them times? 70 times 70? Keep doing it? Exactly. That's what he said. He said, go to, go to him and tell him his fault. Because you know why? He'd be like, man, I didn't know you knew that. Because sometimes people don't even know. It says that precept. That's why he said, I give a mouth to my creation. People say, what do you mean, a mouth? <laughs> so the word for testimonies is Ada. I'm going to meditate on your Ada. And we, you know, they use these words to try to get you to worship AI technology and all these other things. Right? I'm going to meditate on your, your divine testimonies. Right? Testimonies, right? Because remember, he said what? You delight in wisdom. He said, I delight in truth in the inward man in your mind. And David wrote in Talim. He said what? And I'm going to reveal to you the hidden secrets of wisdom. It was a testimony. That was one of the words for wisdom. I'm going to reveal to you the testimony. Right in your face. He says, to, the divine testimony is to form to fall under what? The first category. Of this is a solemn decoration by the disciples as authentication of those things that are fact. Surely he know your thoughts. That's fact. Surely he created the Shamanese in the earth. No matter what language you said, he made it all. Surely he did that. All the 70 Malachi with the 70 languages. He scattered them languages. He said, you see what they do? Surely he know your thoughts. He already knew what you, he's like, look what they doing. Surely he know your thoughts. Surely he do. Right. So this is a rock 20 through 25. This is Rock 4, 20 to 25. It says, Observe the opportunity and beware of evil, and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> he said, I'm going to put you all to shame. But he said, When it's concerning you, he says, For there is a shame that bringeth sin. Before, behold, I was shaping iniquity, born into sin, right? Forget what he says. And there is a shame that which is kabod in con, or grace, another chance. He said, but you delight in, in the inward man, truth, a mark in your tuka, in your inner being, your kidneys. And you reveal the secret, secret things and hidden things of wisdom. There is a shame that bringing forth kabod. When Yahushua was on the stake, what happened? He would bring, he brought forth and bringing sin, right? For there was a shame that bringeth sin. Like he was a bearing all the sin. But then his shame, what? Brought us another chance or come. There is a different type of shame. His shame was different from our shame. It brought forth co glory, kabod, and another chance, con. A little indefinite time of a little space to repent. That's what his brought. It says, guess what it says? Accept no persons against thy soul, and let not the, the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. See, when you start, we just talked about Barak. Yo, Bush. He said, man, don't cause them people to fall, right? Don't be, he's going to cause you to fall. He said, refrain not to speak, and refrain not to speak. Because why? Because he gave you a mouth to his creation. He says, when there is occasion to do good, when it's time to do good, man, speak. And hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. What you hiding that stuff for? <laughs> you hiding all that beauty? You hiding all your beautiful Parts of yourself? Why? 
He said, oh, open your mouth and speak. It says, for by speech, wisdom shall be known. I gave a mouth to my creation. He said, those who once brought low, he said, man, Amar, speak. He says, and learning by the word of the tongue. That's why it's learning. Learning, he says, gifts come from learning by the learning of the tongue. And no why speak against the truth. Don't do that. You're supposed to lighten it through the inward man. Don't speak against the, the, the bar like Satan. He man, Satan, he's man, Yahuwah, he even fight against you. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. When there is occasion to do good, do not hide a witch. It said, for wisdom, it said, for by speech, wisdom shall be known, and learning by the knowledge of the tongue. You know why speaking is the truth, but be abashed of the error of thine, own, thine ignorance. Be abashed by the error of thine ignorance. Isn't that what we just read in the Nazarenes? We just talked about it. the truth must be eagerly sought after, but ignorance is evil. Why? It's going to cause you to speak against the truth when you're ignorant. When the truth is given, a month, you ain't going to receive it. You're going to speak against it because you're ignorant and it's evil. It's an evil thing. Sirach 5 and 10 says, Be steadfast in our understanding. That means faithfulness. Like we talk about delight and truth in the inward man. And David, that who wrote, in faithfulness and trustworthiness. Are you trustworthy? He says, be steadfast in thine understanding and let thy word be the same. Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere. Caduce life, fruits, and with patience give answer to every person who asks you of the hope that's in you. And how they wrote in the, in the brief cut of shot in the t New Testament, like they say. That was, they say it's a lie, but it's not. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Right? Because we know when, when he said when your neighbor has it, doesn't know something, he's ignorant. <laughs> if you don't have understanding, don't be saying nothing. But if you do, why are you hiding it? Honor and shame is in is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. That's it. It says, be not called a whisper and lie not in wait with the tongue, right? For a foul, foul, foul shame is upon the thief and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. I love you. I love you not. I love you. you I love you not. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> You can't, you can't you can't view like this. You who I, lo I love he loves me he loves me not. No, you who love you still. <laughs> you can do that with humans. You who is not a man that he should change his mind. It says, be not ignorant. There we go. Ignorant is evil. Don't be ignorant. It's an evil thing. If you don't know, put your hand on your mouth. Or he says, of anything is a greater matter or small. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. So you see all these great things in the earth? You see all these things happening? Why are you ignorant of it? When you see all these things happening with the UN and all the world and all these countries and all these things, you start seeing the climate of the earth, you start seeing the behavior of men, women, and children. Why are you ignorant of these great and small matters? Why are you ignorant of things that's going on in the earth? The shifts and the things that's going on the earth, the things that, they're dis things that are being rediscovered, things they're digging up. How are you ignorant of these things? Why are you not, why are you not, why are you, why are you ignorant? Because if you're ignorant, you're going you're gonna to mess around and you're going to say something you shouldn't say. You shouldn't be ignorant. It says increase, be not overly righteous. No, it says increase in wisdom and understanding and knowledge in your inward mind, in your inner being, that you may what? Dominate. That you may be fruitful and multiply. That you may destroy what? Evil. Overly evil thoughts. Overly evil people that may come against you. Why? Because you got a mouth. You can't be ignorant out here. You can't be ignorant. You can't be barocking. You can't be bushing. You can't be doing that out here. So... Or Luke or Yah 8.17, for nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor anything secret that will not 
be known and come to light. Nothing. It's going to come to light. Barack, we see you. We gonna come, it's going to come to light. People, man, woman, child, pastor, teacher, evangelist, Nabi'im, Nabi'ah, self-deceived prophets, self-deceived Nabi'im, it's going to come to light. Everything going to be exposed. It's going to put you all to shame. That's what the word does, the bar. Why would you trust in anything other than that? Why would you not bow to the word that Yahuwah speaks? This is Yahuwah 8, Yahuwah 3 and 20. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. I didn't write this. I didn't say this. Everyone who does wicked things hates or light. It does not come to light. Lest his work should be exposed. They cut the, they cut the, the sound of it off. They run from it. They don't, want to, they don't want to see it. Why? Because you're doing something wicked. And these wicked things, the demons on the inside, it's just like when Yahushua came to the pigs. He said, can we go into the, the, the pigs? Because you're going to torment us before the time. They're going to run. The spirits, the demons that's inside are going to take over your body. And they're going to run. They're going to run. They're going to leave. They can't. Because it says you have in your, in, they're in your parts. They're in your liver. They're in your gall. They're in your what? Your kidneys. They're in your throat. They're in your tongue. They're in your mind. They're in your frontal lobe. And guess what it says? Lest his work should be exposed. The spirits and the demons don't want to be exposed. They're having a great time. they partying like it's 1999. So Marshall Lee, 1922. It says, what is desired in man is steadfast love. Aha. And a poor man is better than a liar. Right? Kaza, an untruth, falsehood, deceptive thing, a lie, a liar, lying. All they do is lie. People are like, man, he said, but well, he said, he said, he said, I'm the most beautiful thing in the world. You know, he only said that a lot of you just to get something. How many times, a woman, have you been deceived by that? He said he gonna come. He said he said he gonna do this. How many times have you been deceived? Or well, she said. I know you're a righteous man. <laughs> How many times you been deceived, man? No good and well, she don't, no good and well lying to you. Only to get what they want. How many times you been deceived? How many? How many times? And then people walk around like they ain't never been deceived before. You're a liar. You're a liar. Right? But it says a poor man is better than a liar. So you look at that poor man on the side of the road, right? You who you should say, cast the beam out of your eye. You see clearly cast the moat out of your brother's sister eye. Guess what? You see, you got these things in your thoughts, in your mind, and then you go see that you're lying and you see this poor person on the side of the road holding the sign up. He said, you might want to trade places. He said, how are you going to cast judgment on somebody else when you're doing something the same thing? I celebrate a feast day, a cog, a muad. I have all these things and I go right back to what I was doing before. That's the same thing people do in the world when they celebrate holidays and things. They do things and they go right back to doing the things in the world. So what's the difference between you and them? You're doing the same thing they do. You're judging them, but yeah, you're doing things the same thing they do. You do the same thing they do, so why are you judging them? So Apocalypse, it says Apocalypse, Apocalypse of Cedric. We're going to see some things right quick. It says, Sadrach said to him, It was by your will that Adam was deceived, my master. You commanded the Amalekim to worship Adam. Why? Because Adam was, he said, well, Adam, he formed Adam. He was, he said, perfect in everything. Why are we saying the Amalekim to worship Adam? Because he put Adam over there. That's why you think, why you think this, he said, but he who was first among the Amalekim disobeyed your order. Why do you think Satan ain't going to bother you? Man, Satan ain't, man, Satan ain't about that. He's like, man, you're not putting this, this being over me. And people say, bow. They're thinking like, they, they're understanding. He's telling you to obey what he says. Because he gave a mouth to his, his creation. He's telling Satan, you, got, you tell me I got to obey what he said? You mean like Yusuf when he was in the second chariot with Pharaoh? He said, everything that Yusuf tell you to do, you need to do it. So you tell me I got to obey him? He in the kingdom, you got Yahuwah, you got Yahushua or Pharaoh, and you got Yusuf, and then you got the other servants. So you're telling me, Satan, like, I, I'm your servant, Adam? 
Not nah, Satan wasn't about that. He wasn't about that. He wasn't bound to, he wasn't bound to no Adam. He wasn't bound to that word that Adam speak. He wasn't bound to that, that word that Pharaoh spoke and said, everything you, Yusuf say, you got to do. Right? Just like, just, like, oh, just like you see in the household. He say, man, they ain't going to bother your word. Look what he said. First among, he said, first among the mountain, disobey your order and did not worship him. He says, and so you banished him because he transgressed your commandment and did not come forth to worship the creation of your hand. If you loved Adam, why did you not kill the Satan, kill the devil, the artificer of all iniquity? Who, why would Satan bow to the word? Satan ain't going to do that. Who can fight against an invisible Ruach? He inside people's body. Why would, he's like, man, I'm not doing it. He said, he enters the hearts of men, an old woman, like a smoke. And teaches them all kinds of sin. He, he even fights against you. He mean, he speak, do not otherwise speak against the truth, as we just read. Because you're ignorant. He said, ignorance has to be destroyed because it's evil. It says, the immortal all Yahuwah, right? And it says, the immortal all Yahuwah. And so, what can pitiful man do against him? So you have mercy, master, and destroy punishment. Otherwise, receive me also with the sinners. For if you will not be merciful with the sinners, where are your mercies and where are your compassions, Yahuwah? And Yahuwah Elohim said to him, Be it known to you that everything which I command man to do is within his reach. Let us make man in his own image and own likeness. Zakar Nakabar, humble yourself like a child. Come unto the come and bow to the word. Let him have authority of the fish to see fowls of every creeping thing. This ain't water world. This ain't avatar. This is the real life. This is real life. Man has the ability to do this now. Adam. Not some fantasy world. He said, I made him wise and heir of Shamayim and earth. And I subordinated everything unto him. And every living thing flees from him and from his face. Having received my gifts, however, because they come from learning through wisdom and understanding. But guess what he said? They went from learning Wisdom and understanding, delight in the truth of the inward being, and this is what he said. And he, be, he already became a stranger, an adulterer, and a sinner. Now, now they're shaping the iniquity and sin. Tell me, what sort of father would give an inheritance to his son? And having received the money, the son goes away, leaving his father, and becomes an alien, a stranger, in a service to, to strangers, to demons, to Satan. The father then seeing that the son has forsaken him and gone away, darkens his heart and going away. Because Yahuwah is light and in him is no darkness at all. You darken your heart, your mind. I don't want to bow, I don't want to, bow to the word of Yahuwah. I don't want to acknowledge the son. If I got to acknowledge the son, that means I got to be in authority to the son and whatever he said. It says he receives his, guess what he said? He receives his wealth and his son from his gold, Kabod, because he had forsaken his father, how is it that I, the wonder, wondrous and jealous all Yahuwah, have given everything to him, but he, having received them, became an adulterer and a sinner? <laughs> you now shaping iniquity and sin. You went from being revealed the secrets and hidden things of wisdom, Kukma, because he named all the animals and Kahua and all these things, and he put Satan on his feet, he even told Satan, he said, Satan, you got to obey him. And guess what he said? And he became an adulterer and a sinner. Now you, can, now, now you become like how David was, Daoba. So this is ascension of Yeshayahu. And I heard the voice of the Most High Yahuwah, the Father, the Adon and Master, saying, Adon, Master, Mashiach, uh, to Adon, Master, Mashiach, Yahusha, who will be called Yahusha, go forth and descend through the Shamaims, and thou will descend to the firmament in, the, in that world, how many of y'all can descend from the highest Shamayim to the earth? The word of Yahuwah is now coming. You know the word that one has to submit to? The, one, the word that one has to acknowledge? The one that one, that has, one has to bow to? It, it descended. And, so, and the angel, uh, in Sheol, thou will descend. But Haguel, thou will not go. And thou will become like unto the likeness of all who are in the five Shamayims. Hmm? Guess what it says? 
and thou wilt be careful to become like the form of the angel Malachim of the first of the firmament. And the Malachim, it says, and the Malachim, or the seven Shamis, I'm sorry, and the and the and the earth and the angel angel Malachim, well, I'm sorry. It says, and thou wilt be careful to become like the form of the Malachim of the firmament, and the Malachim also who are in Sheol. And none of them of the angel Malachim of that world shall know that thou master thou art master with me and for and it says master with me of the seven shamayims and of their malakim they're gonna know you over all seven shamayims all the provinces of, of the highest order they're gonna know that you are with me and that you and everybody underneath you have to obey you It says, and they shall not know that thou art with me, till with a loud voice I have called to the Shamaims, and their Malachim and their and their lights, even unto the sixth Shamaim, in order that thou mayest judge and destroy the princes and the angels and gods of that world. That's all he, he came to do. He said, You got another God, you obey another God, you basically obeying Satan. When you don't come unto the Dominion or domination of the Debar that Yahuwah sent into the from the highest Shamaim from the seventh Shamaim, then guess what? You are worshiping another god or an angel or a prince of this world. And the world that is dominated by them, for they having have denied me and said, We alone are, and there is none beside us. And afterwards, the Malachim of death, thou wilt after. And afterwards, from the angels of death, or the Malachim of death, thou wilt ascend to thy place, and thou wilt not be transformed in each heaven, Shamaim, but in Kabod will thou ascend and sit at, on my right hand. So that's what wisdom is, glory. Kabod. It says, and there, upon the princes and powers of that world, will worship thee. Will worship who? Oh, you mean bow to Adam. Bow. Oh, you say obey Adam. He says, These com these commands I heard the great Kabod giving to the Adam, the master. The great glory given to master. He commanded him that. So you think Yahushua, the word of Yahuwah, ain't gonna do what Yahuwah is telling him to do, his father? He rules over the seven Shamaim. You think Yahushua ain't gonna do what Pharaoh told him to do? He rules over all Mizraim. He said, all oh, y'all, everything useless tell you to do, do it. Even Mary, Maureen, Mary, her mother, when she, he was at the wedding feast, and he had put the, put the wand in, in the thing, he said, all that he said to you, do it. He has to. Everything Yahushua told you to do, he said, do it. He said, Martha, Martha, you're so troubled about so many things. But she... She decided to, to, to partake of the thing and never be taken away. And amazingly, she was sitting at his feet. Oh, you mean bow to Adam? Yeshayahu 55 and 8. For, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, declares Yahuwah. So, the ways that people got here on the earth, the ways men and women got here on the earth, they ain't got to obey the word. Yahuwah even obeyed his word. He said, I swore by my word. Yahuwah obeys the word. And then you don't obey it. Then you are like, what in the world? And guess what happens? For as the Shamaims are higher than the earth, the seven Shamaims, they higher than you. They higher than you, man, woman, child, human, human being, made of clay. Show the potter be the clay. For as the Shamaims are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Surely he know your thoughts. Surely he know your ways. Surely he can discern. He said, I serve someone, I'll put you all to shame. He said, I even obey the word. You were like, I obey the word. But then, he said, when I speak, I got to do. He said, I'm not a liar. So therefore, he obeys his word. So therefore, if you don't obey his word, he like, I even obey. 
Satan don't obey it. So that's the only one. Satan, he had some other Malachim who didn't, but he said he burnt them up. And guess what happened? They bowed. They bowed the knee. That's what he, and, and you wonder why he's going to come burn the earth up. He said, what's that whole point of him doing that? What's the point of him burning up all these things? Because he wants people to bow? Because they won't bow to Adam? They won't bow to the word? They won't bow to Yahushua Mashiach? <laughs> They want to acknowledge the son to give kabod to the father because he sent the son. Yeshayahu 23 and 23. Yo, Yeremiahu 20. Yeah, Yeremiahu 23, 23. It says, Am I an Allahim at hand, declares Yahuwah, and not an Allahim afar off, far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares Yahuwah? Do not I feel heaven and earth, declares Yahuwah? I can see you. I can feel heaven and earth. So how is he going to feel an in in inward person, a person, if, he, if one doesn't open their heart to the exaltation of Yahuwah and allow the word to come in? He can't feel you either. He said, you know how I feel Shamayim and earth? Because you made an earth, clay. He wants to feel you. He says, I have heard what the Nabiim have said, who Naba in, lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, or Nabi Yaz, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart? Oh, you mean Kazab, Shakir, in the heart of the Nabi'im or Nabi'az who prophesy lies, who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, their own imaginations. He said, they that despise wisdom and nurture are miserable. He said, but those to the unrighteous, he said, they are deceived by their own imaginations. He said, how long is it going to be in your mind? Who think to take my people, to make my people forget my name by their dreams. That they tell one another, even as their father forgot my name for Baal. Why? Because they're not obeying Yahuwah and his Ben Yahusha, the word. They're not doing it. So he like, man, you forgot my name for Baal. You got to be worshiping Baal. He said, you a self-deceived Nabiyah, Nabiyin. So then Master Lee, Proverbs 8, 23 to 31. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. Were you there before the beginning of the earth? Were you in the other cosmos, in the other world, in the other realm? No, you were not. He said, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water before the mountains had been shaped. Before they even came to be. You go walk on the top of the mountains of these high, high interlocking or K2 mountains. Or a little little hill, and you are you are scared and ashamed. Understand that Yahuwah sits in higher than those mountains, and he way higher than that. The view from him where he sits is way higher than that. And you be, people be shaking; they can't even see. People are like, man, this is crazy. But then you understand how high he is. And guess what he says? Before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he made had made the earth with his fields. Or the first of the dust of the of the earth of the world. People say before he even made dust. He said, "Man, I was there before dust." And then people say, "I ain't gonna obey the truth. I ain't gonna obey his son. Whatever his son say, that's what I gotta do." He said, "No, you, so you ain't gonna obey the words. That mean your dust gonna stay dead." He says, "When he established the Shamaims, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep." When he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his commandment. He assigned that. When you stand on the water, on the coastline, you put your feet in between the sand, man, he assigned that. He obey the word, just like Yahuwah obey the word. He said, the sea light, I obey the word too. And the sand, it's amazing that the sand and the sea obey the word, but humans can't. Why? Because the evil spirits and the demons are blocking one's mind. It says, when he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him as like a master workman. Guess what it says? And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him, always rejoicing in a habitable, habitable world and delighting in the children of men. Right? So when you look at this, he said, and you start going back up. It says, when he established the Shamaims, I was there. When he drew the kug or the circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned this, the, this, the sea and its limits so that the waters might not transit his command, he was there. Right? When you look at, you see, he drew the kug, the circle on the deep. 
You look at that word for circle, it's kook. Kook. Circle, circuit, compass. Compassive, vault. We just talked about a vault. He established the vaults of the Shamaim. Amazingly, you get a compass that's in a circle. You got north, west, south, east, and west, right? They got four different directions. And they be trying to tell you where the direction they go. Move, moving off the magnetic energy and the magnetic, the magnetic uh, field of the earth. Trying to, and showing you where to go. People are trusting the compass rather than trusting in the light and the ore that's shining in darkness. So you look at Kug is Kak, Wa, U, and Gamma. So Kak is eight, U is six, and Gamma is three. Right, you add them up equals the 17, equals the eight. Equals the eight, Shamani. Right, so we start looking at these aspects. He drew the coup on the circle of the earth. Right, so you look at 360 degrees. Right, three plus nine plus zero equals nine. Right, you look at a circle, a coup, right? 90 degree angle. Right, you can pull four 90 degree angles out of a circle. It equals to nine. Nine, 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 four nines, right? Nine, 18, 27, what? 36. Right, you got 90, 90 days per cycle, per three month quadrant, three so cycles. It's four cycles, three months per cycle. 90 days, that's nine. 36, nine, right? Is equal to nine. Four, four cycle transition, spring, summer. Amazingly, we just talked about Adam, is equal to nine. But then we talked about Amat, that equals to nine. Truth. Amat. I delight in Amat. Truth in the inward man, in my inner being. I'll, I'll reveal to you the secret hidden wisdom in your mind, in your thoughts. So you got four cycle transitions, right? So four cycle transitions, spring and summer, fall and winter, because they both can, can move together, right? When you get to the longest day, you get to the, get to the, summer, uh, the winter solstice, right? You get to the longest, well, the longest night. Then you get to the longest day when you get to the summer solstice, or the and you look at the spring equinox and the fall equinox, right? That's leading into the summer. So as we just passed the winter solstice, you're now moving into the summer solstice, right? Now you're moving into the longest day instead of the longest night. We just passed it. Now the days are going to get shorter, right? As we move closer and closer to the summer solstice, and we get the spring is going to get shorter, and then get the summer is going to be the shortest day, right? So when we look at in the revolution of time, 364 degrees, right? When you add up 364, it equals the 13. I told you 13 is significant. A cop. First day. Right? And you get to, you add up 3 and 4, it equals the 4. 4 quadrants. Right? And you add a 2. Amazing, you add, you break it down a small common denominator, you get 2. So when you look at 52 week cycle, 52 weeks per year, right? Divided by 4, it was 13 weeks. 13 weeks, a cod, right? You get 52 weeks per year, divided by two. So we, we, we con congruent, fall and winter are, are together and spring, spring and summer are together. So you say two seasons, right? Two seasons, right? Divide 52 weeks by two, you get 26. You add six and two together, you get eight. We just talked about eight. The cool on the surface of the deep, on the earth. His signature is everywhere. on the surface of the deep. Right, so you look at the cog. You got the olive, the cock, and the cock, and the, and the dollar. You got one, eight, and four, because of 13, a cod. You got Yahusha, his name, Yad, He, Wa, U, Shin, Shun, and Ayan. 10, 5, 6, 30, three, well, six, 10, 5, 6, 370, 391, equals a 13. 13 weeks per, Cycle. So you got 13, 13, 13 all the way around. 90 days per cycle. 364 degrees. 13. You add 13 plus 13, what? You give us a 26. Yahuwah. Yad ha, ha Yad ha u uh, Right? You got what? 10, 5, 6, and 5. It was a 26. You add 6 and 2, you get 8. Just like the Kug. You drew the circle on the face of the deep. 
8. And amazingly, he said, on the last day, the great day of the Kog, the Muad, what did he say? Any man thirst, let him come to me. He said, all, that, man, all those that fear you, let them come to me. As David wrote. But he was talking about one man. Let them come to the word and let them bow. Let man and woman bow to the word. That they may be in the image and likeness of Yahuwah, that their children can follow something. So you have the 26. So you start looking at these aspects. Sequencing everything in perfect harmony. When you go outside of that, then you're not. He says in perfect harmony harmony he said I delight in truth in the inward being divinely testimonies right. so this is Masha Lee Proverbs 31 the words of Agur son of Jaqed the oracle the man declares I am weary Yahuwah I am weary Yahuwah and worn out <laughs> why he worn out <laughs> he says what surely I am too stupid to be a man he ignorant that is evil do not be ignorant in small matters or great. He said, don't even be ignorant. Why? Because don't even open your mouth. You ain't got no understanding. Don't even do it. He said, I'm stupid to be a man. I have no understanding of a man. Don't even do it. Don't even open your mouth. I have not learned wisdom. <laughs> you know why? You know why a person has learned kukma and wisdom? There's a reason why. He hasn't learned it. It's a gift that comes from learning, which means he had nobody to tell him. Or he said he forsook Yahuwah and has been Yahushua. He says, I have not learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Kedush one. They that trust in Yahuwah understand the truth. He says, who has ascended to Shamayim and come down? We just read. Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Right, when Yahushua descended from the highest Shamayim, who, he said, who has ascended? He said, when you who give out a loud shout, you're going you to send in all your kabod. He said, who has come down? He said, go down to the earth and destroy all the gods and the princes and the Allahims and the gods on the earth. And then come back and rise up and come back when you cry from the earth. In the ascension of Yeshua. Guess what he says? Who had gathered the wind in his fist? Master, master, you don't care that we perish? Shalom. And the winds and the way. What manner of man is this? Even the winds and the ways obey him. He says, who has wrapped the, up the waters in the garment? <laughs> who did that? Who gathered all the people in the garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? Yahuwah did in Bereshit. What is his name? Yahuwah. And what is his son's name? Yahushua. Surely you know. Do you know? Yet. Because if you know, then you should, he says, all that name, the name of Mashiach, Yahushua, depart from iniquity. You were shaping in iniquity. Now he's telling you to the delight in truth in the inward man. If you're saying that you know him. He was saying that you know Yahushua Mashiach. Then how come he says, then bow to him. Sit at his feet. Obey everything he told you. Hebrews 11.3 says, By Amunah we understand that the universe was created by the word of Yahuwah. So people talking about the universe, understand that the bar, the breath of Yahuwah, his, his mouth created all things. It formed and shaped everything. It created the universe and the worlds. So that what is seen was not made out of things visible. We talk about the higher ethers. We talk about the things that men study, the League of Nations or the League of Spiritual Intellectuals that Albert Einstein was a part of. They were, it was not the League of Nations, it was the League of Spiritual Intellectuals. They studied the unseen world. They studied protons, electrons, neurons, quarks, molecules, atoms. They studied the universe, they studied sound vibrational frequency. Right? They studied the, the understanding of sound vibrational frequency. It's like Shaul said, if, the, if it give a distinction of sound, how would we know it was piped to heart? They studied vibrational frequency. When Yahuwah said, let there be ore, and he sent the ore into the world, when he sent the sun from the highest Shamayim to come, he, he literally gave us distinct sound, distinct vibrational frequency, and that the vibrational frequency allowed things to come to be, to come into existence. Right? So this is Psalms 33 and 4. It says, for the word, for the word of Yahuwah is upright. We just write it right. It's straightforward. Integrity, upright. Nakuwa. And all of his works are done in faithfulness. We talked about delight and truth in the inward man. 
Faithfulness, amat, that's one of the words. Faithfulness, trustworthy. Are you trustworthy? He loves righteousness and justice. He don't forsake righteousness. He loves judgment. The earth is full of his steadfast love of Yahuwah. By the word of Yahuwah, the heavens were made. The Shamayim, the higher ethers, obey the word, the bar. So you think, why is it not beneficial for a human being to obey it? So you can be who you need to be in the earth. It says, and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts, he gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yahuwah. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Stand in awe. Be in awe of him. So the word for breath is ruach. Wind, breath, blast, resemblance. You want to be in the likeness of Yahuwah? You say, why, why you say that? Because a, a man and a woman are supposed to be in his likeness and image. A woman comes out from a man. That's supposed to be wise and understand wise and, and have knowledge. So therefore, she herself has to be wise and understanding and obey the word of Yahuwah. Yahushua Mashiach. That what? That you may be created in an image and likeness. So there won't be no schism. Like they say, conflict in the body or in the house. Why? Because if you don't, then Satan has full free reign to do what he wants. Unless you, he asks for permission and you're righteous. Right? So this is Bereshith 1 and 1. Right? We're going to read it in the Hebrew. Right? So this is Bereshith 1 and 1. Right? So you got the Bith, right? The Baith, and you have the, the Rashith. Then you have Barah. You have Allahim. Ah. Right? So you got the beginning of the creation of the gods. Right? The beginning of the creation of the gods. Right? So you read it in English. It says, in the beginning, Allahim created the Shamayans in the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness over the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Allahim was hovering over the face of the waters. And Allahim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Allahim saw the light, that it was good. And Allahim separated the light from the darkness. And Allahim called the or yum, and the darkness he called night. Right? So is this light? This light, this ore that you see, this ore that's shining, is this evil? Is this an evil light or is this good? He saw the light and it was good. Is it evil to you? Is it evil to you as a person? Is it evil to you as a human being? Is it evil to you? You know, Satan can do a whole many things. He can try to stop the word. He can do a whole bunch of things. He can, he can make things freeze. He can do all these things. But then you understand, do you hate the light? I know. I already know Satan hates the light. He don't want to be exposed. He said, he, he said you believe there's one Yahuwah? Satan also believes he trembles. But also, when you start looking at being hindered by him, these are all aspects of this thing, right? So you look at this. It says, And Allahim called the or Yum, and the darkness he called night. Yum. And there was evening and there was morning. Akai, first day, 13. 13 plus 13, Yahushua, Mashiach came into the world on this day. And you add 13 on the first day, and you get 26. You get Yahuwah. He that honored the Son, honored the Father. He honored the Father who sent him. He sent the ore into the world, and guess what? You can see it mathematically that he did. Right? He did. Right? So why despise the word? Why despise the, the, the bar? So this is... Yakaziyah 8 and 1, right? Because you know we just read in Yerim Yah, he said, Do not I feel Shamayim in earth? Do not I feel Shamayim in earth? He said, How long is it going to be in the, in the mouth of the Nabi'im, the Nabi'ahs? How long? Yakaziyah 8 and 1, it says, In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Yehuda sitting before me, the hand of Yehuda fell upon me there. And I, then I looked and behold a form that had an appearance of a man. Uh, Adam, huh? Below what appeared to be his waist was fire, and above his waist was what? A lock, as it was something like the appearance of brightness, like a gleaming metal. And he put out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head, and the ruach lifted me up between Shamayim and earth. And brought me in the visions of Yahuwah to Jerusalem and to the entrance of the gateway of the inner court that faces the north. 
where it was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. So you start looking at jealous Yahuwah. This is an image of jealousy. He took me between Shamayim and Earth. Right? This is Zachariah 5 and 9. Then I, lift, then I lifted my eyes and saw, and behold, two women coming forward. The wind was in their wings. They had, they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted, lifted up the basket between Shamayim and Earth. Then I said to the angel Malak who talked with me, Where are, where are they that talk, taking the basket? He said to me, To the land of Shinar, or Babylon, to build a house for it. And when this is prepared, they will set the basket down there and on its base. He said, it's not by wisdom a house is established and then built. Right? Second Samuel 18 and 6. So the army went out into the field against Yasharal, and the battle was brought in the forest of Ephraim. And the men of Yasharal were defeated there by the servant Daoud. And the loss there was great on that day, 20,000 men. So you look at that, 20,000 men just died. And Yahuwah said, they have not rejected you, rejected me as we spoke about before. He rejected me from being king over them. They weren't even supposed to have kings, Malak. But yet he gave it to them. And guess what? 20,000 men dying for things they ain't even supposed to have. So, it says, the battle spread over the face of all the country. Because Absalom want to be king, as we talked about before. And the forest dev devoured more people that the forest devoured more people that day than the sword of, and the sword. And Absalom happened to meet the servants of David, Daoud. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went up, went under the thick branches of the great oak, and his head caught fast in the oak, and he was suspended between Shamaim and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And a certain man saw it and told Joab, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in the oak. He said, He is suspended between Shamayim and earth. Do not I feel Shamayim and earth? So if I feel Shamayim and earth, how come I can't feel you? It must be something blocking you. Is it Absalom? Is it the Ephah? Is it another God? What's blocking you? Is it a spirit? A demon? A shadim? How come I can't feel you? Have you made room? He says, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in the oak. Joab said to the man who, who told him, What? You saw him. Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have been glad to give you ten pieces of silver and a belt if you'd have killed him. But the man said to Joab, even if I felt in my hand the, the weight of 10,000 pieces of silver, I would not reach out my hand against the king's son. Who is the king? Yeah, who is the king? But he has a son. The king has a son. He said, they reject, not rejected you, Shamal. They rejected me from being king over him. So who, you say, the king has a son. You mean Yahushua Mashiach. The king, the, the king of Yahuwah, he has a son. And, you, and he said, you best not touch my son. You better not touch my son. It says, for in our hearing, the king commanded you. Oh, my goodness, right? He commanded, even as he commanded Satan to bow to Adam and obey everything he told him to do. Even as Pharaoh told all the servants to obey Yahusha, and all he think he commanded you to do, do it. Even Mary told the people at the wedding, all he say, do it. He say, but here are the king commandment. He commanded you, Abishai and Athi, for my sake, protect the young man Absalom. Mm -mm. So he said, you can on 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled. And what I shall say, Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come for this hour. Father, kabod your name. Then a voice came from Shamaim, I have kaboted and I will glorify it. The crowd that stood there, stood there and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said the Malak has spoken to him. Yahushua answered them, the voice has, has come for your sake, not mine. This is for, he said, who is this for? It's for our sake. Now is judgment of this world. Because the demons blinded people. Newark had to pray. He said, they blinding my son and destroying him. 
It says, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Do not I feel Shammai Minor? Who is that person riding on the stork? In between the stork? Who is that suspended between Shammai and earth? On the oak tree. Who is that was taken up by a man with shining, gar shining and he put out a hand and he was fire and he told him, took him between Shammai and the earth to bring him to Jerusalem? Who is that? Who is that? He said, I'll draw men to myself. Why is he drinking to him? draw men to himself? Just like the beginning. A cod. Yahuwah sent the word into the earth. It was suspended between Shamayim and earth. Why do you think the Ruach was hovering upon the face of the waters? It was suspended between Shamayim and earth. Do you hate this light? He said the ore from the beginning. This is the ore from the beginning. This is Yeremiah 27.1. Yahuwah is my light, ore, and my salvation. Or, or Actually, uh, I, um, Psalms 27.1. It says, Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahuwah is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Who, he said, Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. When he was that? In the beginning. Yahuwah is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, when darkness, right? When evildoers assail me, he says, is, is it, to eat up my flesh, right? My adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Why didn't they come to eat up his flesh? Because they Nephilim. That's what Nephilim do. They eat flesh. They eat human flesh. Because David, that would, they come to eat meat. Who just say, eat my flesh and drink my blood? You have, life, you have life in you if you don't eat it. He said, I'm the bread who come down from Shamayim. Where you come down from? Because Yahuwah sent it. That's the word. He said, eat that. He said, it's they who stumble and fall. This is Yuganah 8 and 4, 18 and 4. Then Yahushua, knowing all that happened to him, came forward and said to him, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Yahushua neither. Yahushua said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Yahushua said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. When my enemies come, they come to eat my flesh. He said, it's they who fall to the ground. You're going to bow to the sun, Satan. Now, if you, people say, I don't want to bow to the bend. I don't want to acknowledge the sun. Well, then, hey, he said, you won't be in Yahuwah's kingdom. You'll be just like Satan. I don't want to acknowledge the sun. I don't want to say nothing about the sun, Yahushua Mashiach. Why? Because you don't want the world to hate you. You know, hatred, you know why they hate the word? He said, spirit of hatred working together with Satan. You hate Yahuwah. Because if you hate Yahuwah, hate Yahuwah's commandment, you hate the word. You hate, you hate the word, you hate his son, and then you hate the son, then guess what? You hate Yahuwah, and you dishonor the father too as well. This is Mark 15 and 1. It says, and they compelled a passerby, Simone, Simone Serene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Huh? And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. It was the third hour. That's three. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Yahudim. And with him, they crucified two robbers, one on the right and one on the left. I saw, what do you see? I saw two women riding on the wings with the ephah in the middle, riding to Shinar, to the left and to the right. It was the third hour. Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land to the ninth hour. You got three, six, nine. And about the ninth hour, you used to cry out with a loud voice, saying, Aliyah, Aliyah, Lama Sabbathana, that is, Ma'alaihi, Ma'alaihi, why is you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling, calling for who? Aliyahu, Aliyah. And one of them ran and took a sponge. Why? Because why would you do that? He's saying, he said one thing, he's saying another thing. The word spoken said, Ma'ya, Ma'ya, why is that forsaken me? But you're saying, he calling for Aliyah. 
Oh, you mean because spirits and demons blind you? Well, he heard the king say what? Don't touch my son. Protect my son. But not them. Not these people. Not these people. And it says, this man is calling for all y'all. And one of them at once ran and took the sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether all y'all will come and save him. And when Yahushua cried out again, with a loud voice, he yielded up the Ruach. <laughs> Sent in Yahu just been fulfilled. He said, when, you, when I cry from the earth, then you will send back up in your kabo. He's fulfilling that. Because he is the everlasting father. This prince of Shalom, the child right here, Yahushua Mashiach, the son that will sit from the highest Shamayim, the one that everyone has to bow to. So you, Bereshith 1, 3 through 9, right? Bereshith 1, 3 through 9, and Yahuwah said, verse 3, remember he was crucified third hour. And Yahuwah said, let there be light, and there was light. Was he not the light? It was darkness over the land, and, but he still was light. Because he was a light that was in the first day of creation. The ore that was from the beginning. And Elohim saw that the light was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, Akkad, 13. So you got 13 right here. Yahushua was crucified at the third hour. And guess what happens? Yahushua's name was 13, which he was the 26. He's the everlasting father. All at the same time. Verse 6, it says, And Yahuwah's Elohim said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. Elohim called the expanse Shamayim, called the expanse heaven, and there was evening. Well, Elohim called the expanse Shamayim, or the Rakia Shamayim, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. Right, so you got six. Three six, sixth sixth hour, right? You can see that right here. Sixth hour, and all he guess what? He separated the waters from the waters that were under the expanse. Why? Because the people were saying what? He called for all Yahoo, but he was saying I was calling for Yahuwah. He separated the waters from the waters. He separated light from darkness because he was a light in the light above, calling for all Yah. But they thought he was calling for somebody on the earth, all Yah, all Yahoo. And that's the sixth day. How do you say? Three, six. That's the second day. So you got one, two, you know, humble yourself like a child. One, two. Can you count? One, two, nine. Verse nine. And Yahuwah Elohim said, let the waters under the Shamayim be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And Elohim called the dry land earth. And the waters, or the lots, and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, Let the earth sprout forth vegetation, plant yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, planting plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is, is their seed, according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, Shalishiyun. Third day, 369. He was crucified at the third hour, six to the ninth hour. It was dark, little land of deep. He cried out at the ninth hour and gave it the Ruach. And he rose on the third day. Because that's when the plants rose from the grave or came up from the ground. All in the first day of creation, 369. You understand? Nikola Tesla, so this is. And we add up 3 plus 6 plus 9 equals to 18, which equals to 9. 360 degrees, a circle. He drew a kug on the circle of the deep. And when you add up 364, equals to 13, equals the first day of creation. Because that was a light that was in the beginning. And then Nikola Tesla, and you have other people, scientists who study the, the unseen world, said three, you understand 369, you understand the keys to the universe. And we understand that by the word of Yahuwah, the, the world was formed by the universe. And then you go through actually even understanding that the world was formed by the universe in 369. You understand that it, wasn't talking, it was talking about the verses of scripture and how they were made. 
and how they were written. And that numbering sequence, you're showing that sound vibrational frequency and that, and that knowledge, and by Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said, what? He spoke the word and everything obeyed. Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said, so everything obeyed. And everything worked in sequence and alignment that allowed not only the Bereshith and everything to be created, but also Yahushua Mashiach and his redemption for us. So Yuka 1930 says, when Yahushua had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the Ruach. It is finished. People say, what happened? It is finished. Bereshith 2 and 1, thus the Shamaims and the earth were finished. Do not I feel Shamaim and earth? We just read on the first day, he was moving on the face of the waters, and he was a light from the beginning. Akkad 13, and you see his name, Yahushua 13, it was a 26, Yahuwah, and then you see what? Thus the Shamayim and earth were finished. Do not I feel Shamayim and earth? And all the hosts of them, the Shamayim and earth, I feel the Shamayim, the seven Shamayim and the earth. I finished it. It is finished. And all the hosts of them, and on the seventh day, Oh, you mean seven, the light in the inward parts, the truth in the inner being. You delight in that. Seven, you delight in truth, and he will reveal the secret hidden things of wisdom. And he says, what? Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Allah finished his work that he had done. And he rested the Shabbat day and all his, wor and all his work that he had done. Right? You see that. And you look at this day of rest, you see it clearly. You see it clearly. Right? So this is the Masonic floor. Right? You look at the Masonic floor, you look at as the rulers of this world. Right? You look at black and white squares at the bottom. Right? You ever wonder why you keep saying black and white? You, the only reason you keep saying black and white is because it's symbolizing where you are. You're on the ground bound to them. When you say black and white, when you say this black and white narrative that's been going around for almost four, so many decades and years, you're actually bowing to them. Black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, exactly. And then guess what they do? They walk on top of it. They walk all over you. They walk all over you and they walk on top of you. And the more you keep repeating the spell, you keep repeating the spell, you invite the demons in your mind, you create the conflict and the, and the dissension and rivalries in your thoughts, and they take over your mind. They take over your thoughts, and they sow their seed in your mind continually, and you can never break the spell. But today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of freedom. The illumina illumination, the illumination from Barashi is here. Right. This is the Akaziyah 29 and 1. Ezekiel. It says, In the 10th year, in the 10th month, that's this month, on the 12th day of the month, oh, amazingly, we're on the 11th day, but hey, we're almost there. The word of Yahuwah came to me. Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Mizraim, and Naba against him and against all Mizraim. Speak and say, Thus saith Yahuwah, Allahim, behold, I am against you. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth over bots. Right? When you're talking about lion, we're talking about robots, we're talking about lion in wait. In the midst of the streams that says, my Nile is my own. I made it for myself. Huh? Go down to the earth, Yahushua Mashiach, and destroy all the gods and the, and the kings and the princes. Guess what Yahuwah said? He said, I will put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your streams stick to your scales. And I will draw you up from the midst of your streams with all the fish of your streams that stick to your scales. You made the Nile. It's your own. Yahuwah said, do I eat flesh? He said, I own a cattle on a thousand hills. He said, the earth is mine in the fullness thereof. Who is you, Pharaoh? Yahuwah established the ends of the earth. This is Exodus 5.1. Afterwards, Meshach and Aaron went to Pharaoh, said to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yasharal, let my people go, that I may hold a feast, that they may hold a feast to me 
in the wilderness. But your Pharaoh said, who is Yahuwah? <laughs> who? Who's the king? Who is the king? That's literally what he said. Who is the king? That I should obey his voice and let Yashara go. I do not know Yahuwah. When he said obey Yahuwah's voice, he mean, who, who is Yahuwah? Should I should obey his word. Yahushua Mashiach. Obey his voice. Because that's what he is. Yahushua Mashiach Yahuwah, is Yahuwah's voice. And he said, who is that? Who is that I should obey? Who is Yahuwah? He ain't my head. He just despised wisdom and nurture. He just forsaken Yahuwah. And guess what he did? He does not understand the truth because he doesn't fear you, Lord, anymore. Son of Ham, Cush, Mitzrayim. He forsook you, your brother. All right. So when we look at these things, you gotta look at it the way it is. Lord, you see Okinawan 3 and 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So. When we start looking at these men on the earth, look at these beings on the earth, and what are they doing? They're causing people to worship them. They're saying they made them. No. They're saying, who is Yahuwah? They're forsaken, forsaken righteous, righteousness, and they're forsaken Yahuwah, and they even now cast away his men, Yahushua Mashiach, who's supposed to be the head of every each, who's supposed to be the head of every household, as it was in the beginning. Are you like Pharaoh? Right? You gotta look at yourself. How are you like Pharaoh? Who is Yahuwah? That I show up in. You see what happened to him? Are you like Pharaoh? If you read near Kaziah, even after this Pharaoh died, there's another one that rose up. And guess what happened? He said, I made the now. Same that's arrogance. Right? So when we start looking at this, right? He said, if I told you earthly things, you know I believe, how can you believe if I tell you Shamaim things? Yahuwah sits in the highest Shamaim and governs everything through his bend. And whatever the son, he tells the son, the son tells everybody else. Just like Yahushua with Pharaoh, just like Marim with Yahushua, and just like a Ish in a household, just like anything else. Second, First Timothy 2 and 1 says, First of all, then I urge that supplication and prayer and intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. All people. Or you're going to keep saying black and white and allow them to walk all over you. For the, kings and, for the kings and all that are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, righteous, godly, and dignified in every way. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of Yahuwah, our Yasha, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because he wants everybody to repent. Right? He don't want you to barack other things. He don't want you to walk on the floor and say, uh... Black, white, black, white. He don't want the people to walk on top of him. He want everybody to repent. He said he want all people to repent. Why? Because he created he created the world. He's a lover of souls. Right? He says, good and pleasing sight to you, Hood. We desire that all people to be saved, but is it is it really practical that everybody gonna be saved? Do you actually think that everybody gonna be saved? No. And to come to the knowledge of the truth, for there is one Allahim, one, a cog. And there is one mediator between Yahuwah and men, Adam, human beings, the man, Mashiach, Yahushua. Do not I feel Shamayim and earth? There's one mediator between Shamayim and earth, through the unseen world and this world, the physical world. Yahushua, Mashiach. He stands in between. Because he don't stand in between. It says, guess what it says? Who gave himself as a ransom for all people which is a testimony given at the proper time. <laughs> Pharaoh is the 10th month. And all the people who have the mindset of Pharaoh, yes, Anubis, Isis, yes, Anubis and Isis, yes, all you other beings, Osiris, Thoth, Beheti, Tahuti, Jehudi, all you people, all you people, yes, you didn't make anything. Yahuwah made it all. It's not to condemn you. It's just to show you that Yahuwah rules in the kingdom of men. And he give it to whomever he will. This is Philippians 1 and 9. Therefore Yahuwah has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Yahushua every knee should bow. It is my enemies who stumble and fall. 
Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahuwah is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies assail me, come to eat my flesh, he say, it is they who stumble and fall and hit the ground. Every knee gonna bow. Satan, bow to Adam. Oh, actually, obey the word that I said. Satan. But he refused it. Are you gonna refuse? It gonna, guess what it says, in Shamaim's, and on the earth, and under the earth, everybody, in every tongue, confess that Yahushua Mashiach is master, Adon, to the kabod of Yahuwah, to the who? To the, to the glory, the kabod of Yahuwah? The Ab. Every knee gonna bow. Every tongue. You gonna bow. Bow to the word, the bar. Yoke 9, 523, for the father loves the son and shows himself all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you all may marvel. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, gives them life, so also the son gives life to whom he will. For the father judges no man, but has given all judgment to who? The son. The word. The word. That all may honor the word, the son. The Ben, just as the, they honor the Father. So you got to honor the Son, the Ben, just like you honor the Father. So, I, you know, people say they ain't got to honor the Son, then you're going to dishonor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Ben, the Son, the knowledge of Yahushua Mashiach, from the beginning even to the, to the, the end, from the olive to the two, from the 22, like, from all the things that he created, whoever does not honor the Son, the Ben, does not honor the Father, Yahuwah, who sent him, just like he did in the beginning. It's like he didn't extension Yeshiyahu. He sent the, the bar into the world and all who honor him or who bowed to him honor the father who sent him. See, he sent the word. And he told them what to do. Honor the son. And they did it. And guess what you do? If you don't do it, then you just honor your word. You must honor the son, the word. So this is knocking me out 9 and 6. You are Yahuwah. You alone. You have made Shamaim and the heaven, right? You have made Shamaim, the Shamaim of Shamaims. You made all seven heavens, Shamaims, with all their hosts, the earth and all that's on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve all of them. Can you do that? I made the now. No, you didn't. And the host of the Shamaims worship you, Yahweh. They worship you, you, not humans, not human beings, not gods and goddesses and things made of stone and silver to mimic the unseen beings. Did you have visions and all these things? They they curse people to give them the actual wisdom and understanding to make them. He said, "I ain't tell you to do that. Make no image of something so you can worship it, and bow to it, worshiping idols." He said, you're supposed to worship your who? You're supposed to bow to him. You better do what my word tells you to do. Okay. This is Nazarene Acts of the Shalakim, demons in sight, idolatry. Or Nazarene Acts of the Apostles. He said, there is another error of the demons, which they suggest to the senses of men, that they should think that those things that they, that they suffer, they suffer for such as are called Allahim, in order that thereby offering Zabaim and gifts as if it would protect Pitiate them, that they may strengthen the worship of false religion and avoid us who are interested in their salvation, that they may be free from error, but this they do, as I have said, not knowing that these things are suggested to them by demons, for fear they should be saved. That's the only reason they try to get people to do things opposite of the bar. You should don't even acknowledge the son. Why? Because if you acknowledge the son, you gotta acknowledge the father, and you acknowledge the father, you acknowledge the father who sent him. It is therefore in the power of everyone since man has been possessed of free will whether he will hear us to life or the demons to destruction. Because that's what they were created to do, to destroy. You can hear demons. You can hear them in your mind. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. He say, speak the, the bar, the word, as you sit in the house and you walk by the way, you lie down, when you rise up. Also, guess what it says? Also, the sum of the demons appearing visibly under various figures people, 
understand, sometimes throw out threats, sometimes promise relief from suffering that they may instill into those whom they deceive the opinion of their being Allahim, and that it may be known that they are demons to do things, do these things in the present world. How it is allowed them to transform themselves into what figure they please and to suggest evil thoughts. That's what they do. Every imagined thought is evil continually and to convey themselves by means of meats and drinks. They make you eat this stuff. They, they have food around, consecrated to them in the midst of body, of in the in the mind, into the minds or the or bodies of those who partake of it. Once you eat it, they get in your mind, the demons, the spirit. And concoct vain dreams to further the worship of some idol. They even get in your mind and transform the unseen world and metaverse of your dreams just to get you to worship something. Suggest things in, in dreams and in inception like they have in movies. And they suggest you to worship something else. They can do that too. You have to become elevated in wisdom and understanding. You have to become up and understand who you are and, and the power that one has on the inside. So this is Bereshit, or actually the Acts of the Shalakim, the Apostle, the Basur, good news gives power over demons. You see then how important it is to acknowledge Yahuwah, acknowledgement of Yahuwah, and the observance of divine obedience, which not only protects those who believe from assaults of demons, you gotta believe, but also gives them command over those who rule over others. And therefore it is necessary for you, who are the Gulen nations, Yepheth, Shem, and, and Ham to betake yourselves to Yahuwah and to keep yourselves from all uncleanness that the demons may be expelled and Yahuwah may dwell in you. That's anything opposite. You know, Yahuwah already given you the Debar. Because he's trying to dwell in you. He said, delight in truth in the inward parts. In your tuka, as Dawud wrote. At the same time, by prayers, at the same time, by prayers, commit yourselves to Yahuwah and call for his aid against infinite demon, infinite of the demons, for whatever things you ask, believing you will receive. Aid. You're trying to get help from spirits. You gotta commit yourself to prayer to Yahuwah against the demons. But even the demons themselves, in proportion as they see a moon grow in man, in that proportion they depart from him in your mind, residing only in the part in which something of infidelity still remains. But from those who believe with foolish Amuna, they depart without any delay. For when a Ruach has come to Amuna of Yahuwah, it obtains the virtue of the Shamayim water by which it distinguishes the demons like a spark of fire. Nazarene acts the Shalakim, how demons get power over men. Therefore, demons, as we have just said, when once they have been made been able, by means of opportunities afforded them to convey themselves through base and evil actions into the bodies of men, if they remain in them a long time through their own negligence, because they do not seek after what is profitable to their inner being, I delight in truth in the inner being, as we spoke about earlier. I delight in truth in the inner parts, the amat, in my tuka, in your inward being, in your inner mind. He said, Yahuwah delights in that. You do what's profitable for their inner beings. It says, they're necessarily compelled them for the future to fulfill the desires of the demons who dwell in them. Why? Because iniquity you were shaped. Iniquity and in, in, in sin and kata. Why? You have, to, you have to allow these things, you have to allow the bar of the word to get inside. So that the demon, you won't fulfill the will of demons in the future, because that's what they want you to do. You mean they need an army? But what is worse of all, at the end of the age, when that demon will be cosigned to ageless fire of necessity, the necessity, the ruach also that obeyed him will with him be tortured in ageless fire together with its body that it has polluted. Now you see why Yahushua. The master of spirits, everybody was trying to get free from spirits and demons. Why? Because they understood that they could not be in their body. You have to get rid of them. This is Kuhalaf 11 to 3. As you know, as you do not know, 
the way of the Ruach comes to the bones in the wound of a woman with a child, so you do not know the works of Yahuwah who makes everything. It's just some things you never know. We know man tries to seek it out, but there's just some things you'll never know. But then you start looking at these aspects. Can you hear the can you hear everything? No. Can you hear the animals? Can you hear the spirits? Can you hear can you hear the, the other beings? Can you hear other things besides the, the, the normal things you hear? Can you hear other things outside of this realm and this world? Be humble for your lack of knowledge. Be humble for your lack of knowledge. So this is ODE Shaluma 7, 18 through 28. It says, And, and the Most High Yahuwah shall be known in his Kodeshim to announce to those that have songs of the coming of Yahuwah, that they may go forth to meet him, and may sing to him with joy, simkar, and with many harps and tones. The seers shall come before him, and they shall be seen before him, and they shall praise Yahuwah for his love, because he is near and he holdeth. And hatred for him and his word, Yahuwah, Yahushua Mashiach, shall be taken from the earth. And along with jealousy, it shall be drowned. For ignorance have been destroyed. Right? So you look at ignorance. He said ignorance is an evil thing. Ignorance. It's evil. That's Shaluma wrote. He said ignorance is evil. He said you shouldn't be ignorant in small and great matters. He said don't be ignorant. If you don't understand, put your hand over your mouth. But if you have wisdom and kukma, don't hide the beauty from your neighbor. Because the knowledge of Yahuwah has arrived. The knowledge of Yahuwah has arrived. They who make songs shall sing of the Khan of Yahuwah, the Most High. And they shall bring their songs, and their hearts shall be like the day, and like the excellent beauty of Yahuwah, their present songs. And there shall neither be anything that breathes without knowledge, nor anything that is dumb or mute. For he hath given a mouth to his creation, mouth to sing, mouth to speak light and wisdom, mouth to pray against the aid of demons and spirits. I'm giving you a mouth to open the open the voice of the mouth. I'm giving you one, not for a mute spirit to hold the tongue in the mouth, but I'll give you a mouth to speak. Guess what he says? Toward him, to praise him. Just like knocking me on road. All, you created the heavens, Shamaims are the Shamaims, and you told them to work, and all the hosts worship you, praise you. Confess ye his power. Confess what power? He said that the teaching, the preaching, the declaring of the, of the totality of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But to us that are saved, this is the power. What is this power? By the word of Yahuwah, he created the Shamaims in the earth, the sea and everything, and the Shamaims of the Shamaims, the seven Shamaims. He even gives commands. Heaving his commands. He said, confess ye his power. Who's his power? And who just said, if you don't confess me before men, you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my other. You will confess Yahushua Mashiach. That you know him. You're supposed to confess his power. That you know him. The ore from the beginning that came from the highest Shamayim that created the Shamayim in the earth that shined on a card on the first day of creation. And Yahuwah said, let there be light. 369. You mean the one who formed all things. The one who gives, then formed the universe. The sound vibrational frequency that created all things. He said, confess ye his power. Show forth his con, his, his grace. His another chance. His second chance. You mean, I was shaping in iniquity and sin, but now he's saying, I delight in a mot in truth in the tukra. A mot tukra in the inward part. And now he reveals the secret wisdom. Or the secret kukma, or the kukma in the mind. So as we look at these things, we look at the knowledge and understanding of the truth, we look at Yahushua Mashiach, we look at the lies, and then we look at redemption and freedom. For today is the day that one can be free. Today is the day of freedom, today is the day of warning, today is the day of allowing us to, knowledge, to the knowledge and understanding, allowing our minds to be able to partake of these things not to be ignorant no more not to be ignorant no more for your ignorance is evil it's a great evil for ignorance has been destroyed because the knowledge of Yahuwah and his Ben Yahushua has arrived 
not on my own account, not on anybody else's account, is because Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only been Yahushua. That whosoever believe, believeth and know him shall not perish. Why? Because you ain't going to perish. Because you don't have Kazab and, and hatred and Shakir. Because if you do, you're going to perish. But the truth, the Amat, shall make you free. Shall make you free. For the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. 